or seven, just ripping oh it up. Oh my God. I still remember walking from a movie, Her Majesty's Secret Service with James Bond, and making my godfather go to 42nd Street, and there was those record stores, and I bought the album ABC. I didn't give a fuck what time it was. When I got home, I put it on. There was no earphones then. There was nothing. We just put that motherfucker on and let the neighbors knock. Fuck it. <laughs> what was the first song that came out on that? I think it was ABC. Oh, okay. ABC, and I want your back is on that, and there's something else on that. And then after that, they just fucking... It was a rap. There was no fucking looking back, man. And <laughs> he did that for 30 fucking years after that. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. We were at the uh, Ice House one night, and Mrs. Pat was there. Right. And we were talking about Michael Jackson albums. And I said, my favorite Michael Jackson album of all time is the best of Michael Jackson. It was transition in between the Jackson 5 and the solo career. Oh, all right. It was like 80. He still had the nose. He still had the afro. And he put out an album called, and it was him with a pigeon on it. And she was laughing on me. She was like, there ain't no Michael Jackson album with a white motherfucking pigeon. And bam, Lee found it. Oh, and shit. And I'm telling you, that's my. Let me look it up. It's Because I remember I was high. He's the best of Michael yeah. Jackson. Is One he wearing day, like you know, a black jacket and a gray shirt? No, he's not a Raider fan at that point. <laughs> he's, he's still fucking. Uh, <laughs> he's still jumping up and down with the Indianapolis cults or whatever the fuck he was in at that time. Yeah, the best of Michael Jackson. I gotta be where you are one day in your life. It's got a bunch of great fucking jams on there. You know, it just turns out, that, you know, this is how life turned out. To, it's like Anderson Silva to, to be the champion for so long and then a fucking little steroid thing. Yeah, yeah. it's just him holding like a dove. A dove, yeah. That's the oh, fucking shit. best album. Dude. I still remember all that shit. Like, I was a kid when all that was news. Like, when Jermaine left to marry the daughter. Like, that was fucking groundbreaking. Like, you know, it wasn't on TMZ. There was no TMZ. But I remember them talking about it in the news. Like, for people who don't know, the Jackson 5 are defunct. Yeah. They're done. Jermaine left to marry the fucking thing. And you knew it was going to was gonna be Michael time. And so what do you do? Because, like, now, it, nowadays, if, like, a band breaks up, it goes over Twitter. Like that, like, that one dude just left One Direction. And, like, the internet exploded. What happens before the internet? Like, when that happens? Do, like, people just go... They just went, you know, you heard about it, and if you were a Jackson 5 fan, you know, by that time, they had all gotten older. They got ugly. They weren't the cute little fucking <laughs> kids that came on the yeah. scene. But Michael could sing. Yeah, he was the talent of everybody, you yeah. know? He but, was Jordan of the squad. Yeah, he was Michael Jordan. Jermaine mm -hmm. was Pippin, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, And then... Uh, but Janet came through. Janet Jackson came through of all of them at the end. She was like the Kobe. But you know what's going on with her now? No. It's a fucking nightmare. Oh, yeah? Her album came out, or it's coming out, and they got a world tour. They're not selling tickets. Oh. Like, three tickets. I like, selling, like, 12 tickets, so they're trying to play the old Janet. If you look, I think the album's for free on fucking YouTube. Oh, shit. Like, yeah, you know, and listen, man, you cannot not put an album out for eight years or whatever the fuck she did and stay yeah. vocal in this, yeah. you know? Yeah, Sade you, could do that shit. Yeah, but you're still going to always have your bass fans. Okay. But it's a whole new game out there. Janet Jackson's an old fucking lady now compared yeah. to you singing know, sex songs. Yeah. To, to, to be singing whatever and jumping up and down with people. So that was the thing. She made a heavy transition. So I was a Janet. I went to see her. I went to see her twice. Yeah. Rhythm Nation? No. Uh, if. If. Okay. She was fucking smoking. <laughs> Is it possible for her to be good for that long, though? Like, it, could it just be that she's had her a good run? Like, Jesus Listen, Christ. Listen, man, when you're an artist, a musician, whatever the fuck you are, you continue to make music. Whether it's you're selling up. records or you're not selling records. Then you have yeah. a base core of fans, and they buy whatever the fuck you put out. Mm -hmm. They support you. They've gone to see you. They support you through all the years, you know? You have a base core of fucking fans. But you got to stay current. You know, I don't know what the word is. What's the word? You have active. to stay active. active. You have to stay. She was doing movies for a little bit. No, current. I think Current. Current. current yeah, that's what you said. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to stay in like in the mind of in like uh, pop culture. She did a movie with Tupac. That was yeah. twenty oh. fucking years ago. She let Justin Timberlake grab her titty on TV. You know, with that old wrinkled fucking brown <laughs> tit. You know, they banned her from CBS. You yeah, know? I mean, you have to do something in her music. I don't know what the, I heard one song and it's just too slow, Janet. It's too slow. You gotta fucking pick this shit up, man. You yeah, I, I haven't fucked with Janet Jackson since any place, any time. Would you mind? Yeah, that's that's if if yeah. was a great album. That's if the was album. Fucking, uh, shit, fuck if. And I tell you what, man, the pleasure principle, uh -huh. not fucking bad, not no. bad. When I was a beginning comic, I had that whatever the fuck cassette, whatever the fuck it was in the <laughs> car. And I tell you what, that 
Pleasure Principle got me from point A to point B. The last album, oh, and then I went, I said, I went to see on If, and then when I moved to LA, I dated this girl, and she took me to see her at the fucking Coliseum, the Velvet Rope, oh, and shit. I was sitting right next to Jimmy Smith's, right? I never met him. I never knew nothing. I just sat there. He was right next to me. It was like third row. Her father, this girl's father, was the manager of the Stones 20 years oh, ago wow. or something, something weird. So she got all the tickets. I went down there. I'll never forget I'm sitting there, and Jimmy Smith's got up, bro, and he goes, hey, you guys need anything? My fucking heart stopped. Damn. My fucking heart stopped. You guys and you still remember chance? it? I still fucking, sure. Who does that? Fuck. Who does that? What did he say? Did he have him get you something? Yeah, let me get a beer. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, since you're well, gone. I was well, broke. How, was this like post La Familia? Because that's the movie that really this threw is, him out. This is 99, Oh, maybe? yeah. 99. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something, man, about Jimmy Smith. And we've had this conversation. As a matter of fact, I was bored last week after Narcos, and I went back to season six of Sons of Anarchy from the beginning just, to watch my man Jimmy Smith. <laughs> just to do a throwback. To watch him play a Mexican. First of all, let's get something straight about Jimmy Smith, bro. He's been around for 30, yes. fucking one oh, years. Oh, yes. He was in the pilot of Miami Vice. He got blown up in the second scene. He was Tubbs' original fucking... He was Crockett's partner. Oh, he was the Cuban kid that got blown up in a Coke deal. Yeah. First fucking episode. Then he has to go into the diner and tell his wife. Then he got replaced by Tubbs. That's how it starts. But that's, nine, that's 31 fucking years ago. And before that, there was a Spanish dude that did every piece of work there was. He was the guy that played the Spanish dude in Sanford and Son. Oh, fuck. Uh, what the fuck was his name? He was the fucking F. He was the spick. For 30 years, that guy played a Spanish guy that got insulted by everybody. Yeah. By Julio. Julio. Why? Put an episode of Julio in this motherfucker. Julio or Sanford and Son? Julio. Put Sanford and Son. Julio. Something about Puerto Rico. I don't want no Puerto Ricans in my house. Oh, that, that's, like, that's old shit. I think I was like five. Jimmy Smith, I respect. Jimmy Smith has had L.A. Com LA whatever. Uh -huh. Then he had another sitcom. He had NYPD Blue. Yeah. He was on that motherfucker for a long time. He was on Dexter. Yeah. Then he came in as a Mexican on fucking Sons of Anarchy, season six. The scene, the pilot. Oh, have you seen that season yet? No, I haven't, I haven't watched the show yet. It opens up him fucking Gemma. Oh, yeah? From behind, fucking stitched up with gang colors on oh, and shit. shit. He calls her a cracker bitch. I mean, it's, yeah, Julio and the sister. Watch who this guy is. See? This is, the, Julio was. Oh, oh wait, this gang. one or the one below? Julio was on fucking TV. Yeah, this is when the sister comes over. He don't like Puerto Ricans, <laughs> but the sister stays at the house with him. This is a great fucking episode. I don't know how to go. Senor Sampo, you will take me, please. Now? Yes, now, please. No, I got to finish this work, and then I got to do some things in the kitchen. Please. And, and after that, uh, I got to look in here and see what dear Abby said about teenage petting. <laughs> she got a mustache? Uh, okay, then. Get your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yeah, Julio's Ask him to come in. Oh. I gotta go to the principal school. Your mother and a Mr. Santa are here. Why you call them? I know how to go home. We can't send you home without a parent. That's Jeff oh. Garcia. <laughs> when he was young and shit. What is she saying? <laughs> It's you. It's you. <laughs> what happened? What did the kid do? He simply refuses to go into the fourth grade. He insists he's smarter than the fourth grade, which I have no reason to doubt. But, well, because of the language barrier, he can't keep up with the fifth grade. Why he say, Senor Sanford? He said, uh, Roberto El Domo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I said the teacher is unable to teach him. See, the uh, uh, principal old said El Ticho is the dumb old. No, I didn't. <laughs> well, listen, if the teacher can't teach him, then you should put her back in the fourth grade. Is that real? Mr. Sanford, most of our teachers don't speak Spanish, and the government won't provide funds to hire extra teachers who do. It's unfortunate, really, because... In the younger grades, many of our children are Spanish-speaking. Well, that's stupid. Here's a kid that speaks two languages. He's smarter than the teacher. And he can also sell lamps. 
sir. Well, why doesn't the government provide funds for this? I don't know. I imagine they have other things they consider to be more important. Now, what's more important than giving a kid a real good education? This is Mr. why I Sanford, watched Sanford and Sark. It wasn't all about saying, comedy, dog. He was a bad motherfucker. Yeah, he spit message. Dog, put on the episode with the Japanese. <laughs> Say Sanford and Son, Japanese real estate. See what you get. See what you get. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you know, speaking of old stuff, man, I was watching Warriors the other day. Well, they did a reunion in New York or some shit. Yeah? That's crazy. Which one? Home. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Home Sweet Home. Home Sweet Home. Oh, my fucking God. Home Sweet Home. Watch this fucking episode right here. This is fucking craziness. This is when they want it. The Japanese people want to offer them money. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> this fucking little... We'll clip it over there. Skip that. This isn't the Japanese want to buy his uh, property. And he goes to dinner at their house and shit. And they, they, oh, it's a full episode. Too. Oh, no, they make him put a robe on and shit. <laughs> and then they want him to sell his property. What's it say? Pain in the neck. Keep going. I just saw it before. It don't matter. I don't want to make people sit through right. this shit. George <laughs> Perez is here with playing Sanford and Sons and shit. Fuck it. He's just having fun, brother. Having no, fun. No, but man. it's uh, it's really weird, like how those Spanish guys played on TV for a long fucking time until more. It's like Bob Robert Constanza. Robert Constanza, an Italian guy, had been in a thousand fucking things because for thirty years he was the only New Yorker out here. Mm -hmm. They used him for everything. Yeah, you know, commercials. I mean, fucking guy works all the time. Got a beautiful fucking house. Yeah, man, I got, I got the same problem with that guy, Noel. He plays the cholo in everything. Noel, he was in uh, Bruce Almighty, Fast and Furious, uh, Training I, Day. I haven't seen him lately. Though. Yeah, he's you know, seen him on auditions and yeah, shit. He's heard, really hot. Yeah, he's cool. He's got, he turned Christian. Yeah, he had a little gambling problem from what I heard, and now he's doing good. He's doing his thing with the family. So he's not acting anymore? I think he is because uh, he was in that one movie, The Purge, the, the last one. That's the last one I've seen him in. He's even in video games. I'm trying to get that Cholo. Nintendo, if you need a Cholo, call me. I'm vintage. You know what I mean? You've been banging it out here for a while, George Perez. Uh, you're, you're like the fucking, uh, you're out every night, man. Yeah. Oh, you come do the on. rap you battles. Know. You do the roast battles. Yeah. You're like the chief roast battle. What did you just tell me you did? You helped, uh, what's his name, with the prison special? He, he oh, yeah. Uh, it was cool, man. Jeffrey Ross hit me up and just, you know, just uh, talk to him, give him ideas and stuff. He showed me what he was doing. He and, was funny uh, in that. He was good. I haven't seen that one yet. Parts. Yeah. He was funny. Yeah, he, he was, was good. He was he, his message was good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a dynamite guy. Jeff yeah, he's him. awesome, dude. And like, I didn't even know he gave me a credit, and he just goes, hey, look at the preview. And I was like, what the? And my name was under Chris Rock. That was the first time ever. He always does stuff like that. Yeah. He's taking Tony Hinchcliffe under yes. his wing. A lot of writers, he gives them a good chance. He's a good fucking dude. He comes Fuck up to the yeah. store. He says things to you before you go on stage. And for a long time, I didn't think I like liked him. Like a long time, I didn't think he liked me. And then uh -huh. we started talking. He loves his reefer. You yeah. know, he loves his motherfucking reefer. And he loves writing good fucking jokes. Yeah. And you've had some great people around you, man. But that's yeah. fucking cool. That you got yeah, brother. You know, I'm grinding. Man. You know, I, I, I had to get out of that little Latin world. You know how that Latin world keeps you there like the ghetto. And I was like, I know I'm gonna go explore and venture, and I'm meeting other people, and I love it, man. I love it. One thing about the Latin world, which I gotta tell you, I got a lot of comedy education. Oh yes, from the comedy store. I'm gonna tell you that right now. We talk a lot about the comedy store. You people probably your ears are bleeding. Joy, yeah. the comedy store again. But the other credit to a lot of my stage savvy, whatever the fuck it is, and presence, is those Mexican. Trainers. Oh yeah. When I got to this town, man. I got spots at the store, but my bread and butter was Rudy Moreno, was the guys like Fly, Jeff Garcia, you, mm -hmm. you know, Felipe and Willie had yeah. went Tuesday and Wednesday. Somebody else had Thursday. You know, on, on a Thursday night, you could make, you know, 200 bucks yeah. in 60s. <laughs> in 60s, going to different rooms. West Covina, Jeff had the Safari Club, oh. where you had to walk up 22 fucking steps, and the stage was rattly. A bunch of fucking drug people in there. What about Casa Latina? Casa Latina on Tuesdays, Tuesday, you 40 could do, bucks. Yeah, you can do uh, the Ice House and then come over there. That's right. That's uh, right. I mean, th those are the days my do. It was so weird, the transition, because the transition stopped in 2008. 
In 2008, we lost 20 fucking rooms in the city. Yeah, I was locked up. Chicago, out. a lot of people lost rooms. And see, when what I, happened in 08? You know, that whole stock market thing that crashed? Yeah. Like, but, but that, it really affected. And this is what happened. I mean, the, there was a strike here in 2007. And it really fucked in 2008, 7. Yeah, it was like the screen actors. Right, right, right. Screen actors. And it really fucked a lot of people up. They wanted that DVD money or the they, download some money. Shit, right. And I remember in those days, Lee, let me tell you something. And I got no reason to lie to nobody. I was getting $15 at the store. I was acting a little bit. But my bread and butter were those Mexican rooms and residual checks. Fuck yeah. Because my wife, at the time, my girlfriend, didn't really know what I made at those rooms. So she'd say to me, where are you going to? I'm going to George Perez's. I was really going to George Perez's and somebody else, I'm like Chino, to pick up 80 bucks. That was my cocaine, gas, and weed money. <laughs> so I'd still come home with the 50 from George Perez's room, but I'd still have the 80. Dog, I was going out three nights a week to those rooms. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Come on, bro. You're making 150 a week in town if you yeah. hustle. If you know how to fucking step on the gas and tell Rudy I'll be there last, I'll close it, and you can balance it. There's a Laker game. This, you know, this room is fucking backed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do it. Steven's Steakhouse, Commerce Casino, the fucking Bicycle Club. Yeah. We did all those fucking clubs. Yeah. And I mean, to drunk, you know, I was there the night that they threw a knife at Darren Carter. And, <laughs> and I wasn't what? there. It was Wild Coyote. No. At Wild Coyote, too. Yeah, they threw a yeah. knife at Darren Carter. Then they threw a knife they at him. They jumped Tommy Chun. Where? At Wild Coyote. Who did? Well, do you know how Tommy Chun, he was killing on stage, and then he started talking to the Cholo's girlfriends, and they're like, hey, we don't, we don't let no black guys talk to girls over no, here. No, 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 no. So they jumped him, but he turned into a silverback gorilla and just, because Tommy's from Detroit, and Fly jumped in, too. Really? They yeah, I wasn't them? there. Yeah, I wasn't there. They, That's what they I heard. threw a night. Where's all the Hawaiians at? What city is that? By San Diego? Carson. No. Oh. San Diego's got those Samoans. What's the, the ocean side? <laughs> they threw a knife at, oh, uh, that's when, what's his name? Rick Martinez. Oh, yeah. That's Had that room in Oceanside. They threw a knife at Moon doggies or something? No, that was in San Diego. This yeah. was motherfucking Oceanside. Oh, wow. Then they had that room that the Mexican dude used to book off of San Diego all the way that down. That was uh, Papi Chulo or no. Leonard? No, uh, no. And I'll tell you who else I used to have tons of comedy when I moved here. The other living I had was the other direction. The other direction... Now they're opening up Oxnard. The improv yeah. will open up Oxnard by December. Yes, that's And that's going to awesome. really be awesome because there's nothing up that way. Uh -uh. So for years, Lee, Wednesday nights was Oxnard. Tuesdays was Bakersfield. I remember going, I remember a time when we would drive to Bakersfield for two gigs. Like one comic had a 8 o'clock and another comic had a 10 o'clock. And they'd say, if you're there for the 8, you might as well come across town and do the 10 o'clock. Uh. And fucking Bakersfield. That's how much all, the black... Host up there, up north. An oh, hour and away. What's the guy that books all up there? Visalia. And That's all. Papi Chulo. And the other, Leonard Martin. Leonard, Leonard. Martin. Yeah, Leonard, Leonard used to use the black radio guy. Oh, who yeah. He was a really cool dude. Andre Covington. Andre Covington. Covington. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm telling you, Lee, there was so much fun. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then I had Orange County on lock. Remember? I had Roscoe's. You, know, you would just come for the sandwich. Fucking Roscoe's has good sandwiches. Good sandwiches. And let me tell you something about Roscoe's. Uh, you know, I was talking to Lee that how. You ever go do comedy somewhere and they pay you and the room is good, but there's nothing else there. Yeah. You leave there and you forget about the room and you go the second time and some people are like, hey, I'm happy you're here. But there's some rooms you go to and they give you 30 bucks, but they treat you like you're fucking Adam Sandler. And say what you want to say. The guy at Roscoe's, the guy that used to be a salesman, the big guy. Yeah, Dan. He was always good to me. Bro. Oh, he's awesome. You understand man. me? Yeah. You know, it's like the, 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 the dude down in Orange County. He don't book a lot of dudes. But, bro, when you're broke, he gives you a dinner, and then he goes, come here. You want a dinner to take home with you? When you're a comic and somebody gives you a cheeseburger to take home, Lee, <laughs> you remember that for the rest of your life, dog. When you're getting $50 a set in a strange town, and the cook comes over and says, come here, bro. I'm going to throw this away. You want these fucking hamburgers and these steak fries? And you're like, fuck, yeah. That dude, what's the, the Comedy Magic Club? I don't know. In Orange he, County? He always feeds you in Redondo Beach down there. He doesn't like me. He doesn't, I he have doesn't never like done me. it. I'm too dirty for his club. Oh, okay. It's a very white club, yeah. older people. But that's kind of like, isn't it just good that he tells you that? He's like, hey, man, I, I like was you. never mad at the guy. Yeah. I love the Comedy Magic yeah. Club because of that. He told me, he goes, mm -hmm. just your comedy doesn't go over. You, I got 22 complaints. 
I get it. I'm not mad at you. Yeah. I was too raw for the room at that time. This was like six years ago. I was yeah. too raw he, for the fucking room. He caters to his neighbors. Yeah. He has his, you know, Jay Leno goes there on Sundays to work out. Yeah. Right. But, but it, you, you have a lot of things to say about, like we were talking before about the people who are in this industry. And like you have a lot of people, you always say people never say no to you. They just don't answer the call. So you pro- there's a lot of there's, there's probably a lot of club right. There's a lot of people who won't give you an answer. You yeah. send them a tape or you call them and go, "Hey, I got a recommendation from George Present." For some reason, they just don't like Joe Diaz. For some reason, they don't like George. Pre- yeah, hey, Everybody, I get that too. I get like- it, and I don't get my. It's business. Mm-hmm. It's a part of fucking business. And you know what? Then you have two things to do. You could take it like a man and understand. You know, I don't like hot dogs with ketchup on. Right or wrong, you like that shit. No, I got kind of just mustard. I know, but if I'm not around, you would put ketchup on it and mustard <laughs> and rub your face like a fucking jamok. I know you. But, you know, I mean, so every one, one man's chicken is another man's gumbo, bro. So I, yeah. I, I get it. Speaking of which, I shot a special this week. Oh, yeah? What'd you do? In Vegas at the South Point Casino. 24 years of comedy, nobody's ever given me shit. I went in the bank, I said, fuck it, Lee, let's shoot it ourselves. Wow. How was the turnout? The turnout was great. I got to listen, man. Uh, as far as the people who listen to this podcast and the people that we've helped and they've helped me, I want to thank you. I want to give you my heart. Uh, you know, people showed up Friday night with T-shirts on. Wow. People showed up Saturday night yelling and screaming, and it meant the world to me. It made me, you know, work harder and it let me, you know, this is something I never anticipated. Years ago, I said something on the Rogan podcast that these people on Twitter and Facebook are a bunch of fucking stiffs. And boy, did I have to eat my words. Yeah. Because I've met, you know, the, the guy who stole the weekend was Lee, obviously. No. And the fucking talking Leia. Two friends, a guy that we met from here that's just a sweetheart. He's captain of security. He's our <laughs> consultant. He's the consigliere of the family. But as far as this little fucking Jew motherfucker, I was thinking about what that dummy said to you that night. That fucking idiot that was sitting there that lost all his clients. That everybody fired him. That fucking Barry, whatever his fucking name is, that came yeah. in and tried to be cute on your expense. You know what I'm saying? I bust your balls, but I love you. He was disrespectful that night. He'll never come back. I never want to see that fucking idiot. I always thought he was a fucking idiot anyway. But that night you were stoned. You couldn't really say much. And he's like, Lee will never be a good manager. Da, 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 da. Oh, Lee wow. knows more about the internet than any of these fucking managers. Lee could walk into three yards. And if they were lucky, if they gave Lee 75000 like they know, what do we do? do to get our clients on the internet because anybody knows if you're on a tv show right now that show's going to come to an end yes and you want to hold on to these people that's where the computer comes in because if not six years from now you'll be janet jackson you'll be you know you don't have a voice in this this internet is where you need a voice in right now tv shows yeah you could do a tv show for eight years nobody knows who the fuck you are tell a story about mugging a hooker and leaving <laughs> a fucking cemetery and all some people start coming to fucking shows yeah. So I've learned a great deal from this podcast. But anybody who came out from this podcast and supported me Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you know me, man. Uh, I thank you with all my heart. But at the end of the day, Lee stole the fucking weekend. He really did. I, I give credit. With what, credit I was high like half the time. I break your balls. I do a lot of shit because I love you. And I got to tell you, you lifted. You, you went farther than what I thought you'd do. You went fucking farther and beyond, man. So. Without you, none of this would be possible. So thank you very much. You stole the fucking weekend. And I'm a man. No, no I way. Tell I, people, don't, I, I tell people how things are, <laughs> and I tell you both fucking ways, George Perez. Fuck we yeah. only got one way to fucking do it, you know? Yeah, straight up. Hey, good fucking shit, Lee. Take it. I, don't, I mean, I, I appreciate it. It's always nice to hear that, but it's just... Everybody, he came all in I here want, and all I wanted this to... fucking kid. You know, these fucking managers and agents, they think they walk on water, and they don't know that part of this fucking luck and the fucking idiots you know and part of this shit. Half the people you see on Comedy Central ain't fucking funny. No. Half the people you see on fucking TV never make you fucking laugh at your life and they're making millions of dollars. But that's not the fucking point. Their luck is better than our fucking luck, okay? We make our luck happen. That's a different... You know what? I'm, yeah. not, I'm never going to be on Netflix. Netflix don't like me. Well, I'm not going to give people a special. Fuck it. I'll give yeah. them a special for five dollars yeah. a fucking piece. Fuck, hey, there's other openings. We have good fucking times. That's what this is about. That's what the society is about right now. Mm-hmm. You're going to lose your fucking job pretty soon. You're going to lose it to the Japs. What the fuck are you going to lose it to? Yeah. You better make your own way. This is when your dream kicks into effect and you get your dream to pay the fucking bills. That's a transition is getting your dreams to pay your fucking bills. Straight up. You know, uh, he I'm really hit there. it out of the park. He really, this Good kid shit. really hit it out of the park. Good shit. 
And uh, I can tell it came out good then. So you're fucking. It excited. did come out good, and he ran the whole fucking thing with John Salami. And yeah, John uh, killed it. John John isn't here, but he he was really. Cool. I like. I've been out of TV production for a while, but this past week it was fucking fun. Like John just is great, and it was just so much. I see it like whenever I I worked in TV or I've been places with you, I see how much extra stuff is put in, and I I do ask quite like I I sometimes ask you stuff just to test the waters, but I didn't really I don't know what I did I kind of I just let you do your thing and make sure the cameras were on. It was just your behavior before that, that even the flyers, the 70 pens from the dollar store. <laughs> well, fucking, we were talking for two weeks. Yeah. We're going to do a questionnaire. I made up the questionnaire. Just, uh, I emailed him. I wanted to see how you were going to act on this one. This was going to be a real test for you. You know, we've done the podcast. We've done a documentary. Mm-hmm. We've done two CDs. We've done now a special. Yeah, this I remember is, that CD you did at Sal's Comedy. You remember that Sal's, old ass one? We never used that. Oh, shit. Never. It was terrible. Terrible, you had, but you had a lot of actors there that day. Oh, we had the dude there, and yeah, but it was terrible. I couldn't put that out. The guy still calls me. He's like, I could save it, though. There's nothing to say. <laughs> there is nothing to say. That was one of those comedy nights, dog, where you think you got it. You ever have that? Like, you're Fuck like, I got yeah, this. You I got, watch it, and then you I got watch enough it. Material. I got enough shit. I remember being up to that night just dying. Just no dying, way. Dying, dying, dying. A slow fucking death. Hey, but that's good, man. Like, 10 10 of 2010. That was five fucking years ago. I was a complete different comedian. Yeah, I was fresh out. Fresh out. I was just transitioning into storytelling a little uh-huh. more and trying to slow them down. I was a compl- I was at a place I had no fucking idea. So you've been out five years now? Yeah, I've been out five years, man. And how about parole? I'm done. I've been off parole for two years. How's it feel? Fucking feel white. You know what I mean? Privileged again. Now, for how long were you in the system the first time? The first time I ever got locked up, I think I did like four months. And then there was still pro. How long the probation and the yeah, whole you do that year probation right. bullshit, but then you get a quick job and they get you off. And then the second time I did a county year, eight months. And after that, they give you that little gang enhancement. You know what I'm saying? You get the badge, and uh, yeah, we shot a special. Yes. Called whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Right. Payaso. And then you got arrested how long after that? Once it aired. Well, I was, I already got arrested before that special. I was fighting, I I got bailed down. I was fighting my case when we did that special. That's amazing. Yeah. And then, like, I think it's eight months later, I get locked up. And then it comes out while I'm locked up. That was a crazy shit that the guards were like, hey, I seen you on Showtime last night. And I was just like, Fuck. I wonder if they're going to send me money, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was insane, man. That was insane. But it was good to see you up there. I, I got to see you in a lot of shit. Nobody believed like I knew you. Like, you don't know that guy. But it was crazy because I didn't take that seriously that night. All I wanted, that was the night after Thanksgiving. Yeah. I basically shot that for Coke money. Like they had I remember. After, they had an after party. I gave my room key to uh, Marilyn's husband. And I did 90 all the way home to yeah. catch the Coke guy. It was <laughs> I me- crazy. I remember we got there, and me and Edwin showed up, and you were like, "You, I, sh- I-, I should have called you guys. I- they've had me here since 7. This is some bull. Me and Edwin, I thought like at 8.30. And you were just like, fuck this shit. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. That was, that, was, that was fun, though. Hey, we had fun. We had a lot of fun. We had fun. We killed it. That's, really, that's still really popular, like on Netflix. Oh, please. When that thing went on, like people were just staring at me. They didn't know what I was saying. Spanish people don't really like that dirty type stuff. Nah, but you they, they gave it up. They really don't. They really fucking don't. Because they giggle for a couple minutes, then the Catholicism comes out. Yeah. It's like the Bible Belt. Once you go to the Bible Belt, you'll make them giggle for eight minutes. But they're like, what the fuck am I giggling about sex? I can't be laughing at this. I go to church every Sunday. Then you're doomed. Hey, can you pull up to see what he's wearing, though? He's wearing an old school black sweater oh with some blue jeans and like some like, I fucking still fight listen, boots. Listen, dog. That's all that fit in those days. In those days, I used to rotate three pair of pants, two sweatshirts, and two <laughs> pair of sneakers, and all the big daddy clothing wear I could fucking find. Wow. I, re- I spent every dime in those days on blow. Those last couple of years... I lived off Big Daddy clothing wear, four or five pair of jeans. I go to Miami and go to what's that Old Navy? 
Old Navy. Old Navy had 1995 fucking pants for me, the fat man pants. They had the last size. I would buy Old Navy pants and not wear a belt or buckle them. <laughs> and just put the zipper all the way up because <laughs> I could save enough. a ton of fucking money. You have no fucking idea. I went, I went there that night thinking this was not going to get picked up. God bless Scott I know. Montoya. God bless Scott Montoya because I fucked up. I let him down. And I've always thought about that. How Look at those pants. You killed, though. You killed. I didn't fucking kill. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. That was fucking embarrassing. Yeah. You know what's crazy is everybody from that group did something but me because I got locked up. I didn't do shit after that. Yeah, you did. What did I do after that? I didn't do nothing. Now, when did we shoot that? 2000 what? Uh, 2004? No, 2006? Really? Yeah, 2006. 2006. Marilyn died in 2007 yeah, or something like wow. that. Yeah, wow. Because it came out in 07. But we did so it So we in shot it in 06. Yeah. yeah. Some ghetto ass wow, theater in San Bernardino. Nine fucking years ago. Yeah. Oh my God, I was out of control, Lee. Mm -hmm. That was the point. I was out of control, Lee. He'd call me up. Hey, your uncle Joey needs some rent money. Let me know when the rooms are open. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, that. And back then, his message on his voicemail was like, "Don't, don't, don't you even dare live. If you ain't got I, money I in the them. envelope, or a Jew, or you're my lawyer." Don't leave, leave a, a mess fucking message. message. I would torment people if they left a fucking <laughs> message. I was in such but, bad fucking shape, you would not believe it, Lee. I think back to that night, like, I didn't want to be there. I didn't know what I was going to say. As soon as he said 2000, I was like, I'll be there. All right, 2000? All right, fuck it. I'll take and that. And a Showtime wine bottle. Yeah, and a Showtime That's wine it. bottle. At least they took care of us. It was a nice little shoot. Yeah. We had a little room, a little cute room. It was a great theater. It really, really, you know, you learn from all those things. I still remember shooting K Loco. No, the one before that. The local comedy jam. I was on there with you. No, before that. The one that Pat Buckles did for Jeff Valdez. And they oh, wanted me to work clean on CTV. Yeah. I did two of those. One with Ari at oh, the wow. studios in Glendale. Wow. Remember that one? Yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah, I do remember that The host was like Willie, Carlos Oscar. It was, uh, yes. I forgot what that was. And then we shot K Locos. I shot one of those. They hated me. I did terrible that night. No way. Oh, that was the Spanish night at the, at the, at the ice house. I used to avoid it like the plague. Then. <laughs> avoid it like the plague. Even if it was, I, I'd only take the 40 bucks if I, God damn it. I would go up there ready to bomb. The same thing with Monday nights at the Laugh Factory. That was a $25 oh. check in those days. Wow. The following Monday. So Gilbert put me up every fucking Monday. God bless his fucking soul. Even though James Masada didn't like me. Yeah. I, every fucking Monday that cocksucker put me up. I used to get you up uh, at my uh, the patio. Remember El Patio? El Patio. On Wednesdays. On Wednesdays. That shit would crack. Hot women, Lee. Hot women. I was young. I was crazy back then. I was like a, I didn't. I was like a cholo, but I was like a baggy clothes cholo back then. I was active. And then well, your buddy Ernie G had the room in Universal City on Mondays. That was a oh, good room. Oh yeah, the conga room. The conga room. That was a good room. I did a lot of good jokes in there. I, I really did. Every Monday night, Ernie got a lot of problems, but he'd always give me the small twenty or the <laughs> large twenty-five. You know, he'd always save me. I remember going there one night, dog, with no fucking dough. No dough, no dough, and getting 20 from, I was leaving the next day to do the longest yard, oh, and shit. Jeff gave me 45 bucks. I went up to Jeff Garcia like a man. I go, Jeff, I'm going to New Mexico. I don't have no dough. Jeff goes, I'll give you what's in my pocket, like 46 bucks. Damn. You know I went and bought a 20, and I kept 26 <laughs> of it, and I took the 25 from Ernie G, and I bought weed. It was fucking terrible. Jeff Valdez, Jeff Garcia gave Jeff me the Garcia. money. To take to New Mexico the next day. The twenty dollars I had was Jeff Garcia. How's that for you? On a Monday night at the fucking whatever that was up there, which was great. The Conga Room. They had little snacks for us. Yeah. Remember, a lot of places had snacks for you in those days. It, it, and it, yeah, it was like a little like weird old guy that ran it. Too. Remember his buddy back then, that guy who ran. What the it? fuck, guy? Again, what? you're spilling what? shit. It didn't spill. What happened? Some little weird guy used to run that club. I don't remember him. That's, I was such a rookie back then. You know, we were talking about Texas last week and how much 
how much I cut my comedy teeth in Texas. I really did. Texas was El Paso. Texas oh, had yeah. so I many mean, fuck, so much comedy yes, in those days. Pain rooms. Pain. pain rooms. I would go to Texas and stay for four fucking weeks just driving through Texas. A bunch of little rooms. I'd go to Conroe. I'd go to fucking Midland. I did every uh, the, the fucking water of Victoria. I did every little town in Texas. And they would fucking hate me, but they'd feed me afterwards. Fuck. The comedy yeah. fucking journey it really is a weird journey. Yeah. How many sets do you think you've done? You figure for 10 years, 10 to 12 years, I did 300 plus a year. I've been doing this for 24. You know my work ethic. Right now, if I go on the road, I do five a week plus the one at the comedy store. That's six. So if I go on the road twice in a month, that's 12. If I stay in, I do three a week plus one at the last factory. So that's eight and 12 is 20 a month. Even now, I'm still doing 250. You so got to do 250 to maintain. If you're a fucking real comic, listen, I know what it's like to do comedy six times a month and call yourself a comic. I know what it's like to do comedy 10 times a month. I know what it's like to do comedy 20 times a month. When you do fucking comedy 20, 20 times a month, you got a lot of ups and downs, but you're getting on stage and working out. You think you've done it like 5,000 times, maybe? Fuck yeah. You figure That's 300 crazy. times 20. What's 300 times 20? Let's find out. Let's figure it the fuck out. Because there were years I did 363. When I first got to LA, the first three years, I was, average, Six, six thousand. I was averaging 350, 334. Damn. Because I was at the store five nights a week, plus the two at Willie's, plus the one over here. Yeah. You're doing 10, Rudy's room. I was doing 10, 9, 7 fucking sets a week, hosting at the store. It's a complete difference. For a year, I did jujitsu once a week. <sighs> then I started picking it up twice a week, and I could see a little bit of improvement. Now, there's some weeks I hit three times a week, and that's oh, a good shit. fucking week, man. Yeah. You sit there going, wow, I'm moving better. You know, I can't wait to get up to six times a week. That's like comedy. You know, you do it every day. Like, you want to do it when you have a passion like that. You do it just the way you do breathing. Fuck you yeah. know, I don't, I don't understand a comic that does not get on stage. Yeah, I, I go up about five times a week. You yeah. know me. I used to have five rooms But a you week. used to go up 12 times a fucking week. Oh, yeah. I used to be When there were 12 yeah. sets available. If they're Listen, available. If I don't do there. a podcast, I'm out. If yeah. I didn't do this on a Monday night, I'd be picking up two sets tonight. Yeah. Plus two more sets on Wednesday. That's four. Plus the Tuesday at the store is five. Thursday at the store is five. Friday six. I take off and six a week. That's 24 a fucking month. That's how to do and it. And that's the only way to fucking do it. Yeah. When I lived in Denver... I did 16 sets a month, and I had to work like a dog. That's karaoke. When I went to Seattle, I kicked it up to 30 a month, and I could wow. feel the improvement, the improvement just, you know, and then you go on a triple run for six weeks where you start a joke on a Tuesday, and by Saturday you got a bit if you're working. Yeah. If you're working. If you're in your car with your notebook making notes and smoking dope, that's what the triple runs are for. Nobody's going to see you. You're mm -hmm. in Missoula, Montana. <laughs> Who's going to see you up there? CBS? You could say whatever the fuck you want out of your mouth. There's some clubs that are Mormons, so you got to be careful. They'll tell you on the way in. But that's what a comedian does. You get on fucking stage. Fuck yeah. I wrote everything. I don't know. That's nothing this motherfucker did. He got up on stage and blew it up Friday oh, yeah? and Saturday. Saturday before the special and Sunday. That's what's up. How much time did you do? Uh, Five fucking minutes. I didn't that's that. awesome. I he wiggled. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> he took an edible on stage. Oh, shit. You know, and that's what a lot of, I think that's a mistake of a lot of people who come to town. You know, a young comic, you got to be at the store on Monday night. That's a young comic yeah. trying to hustle, hello, yeah. goodbye. I'll tell you what, before you hit the store, you hit a fucking coffee shop. Or you hit an open mic somewhere. That, mm -hmm. Just to get the set out of the way. Yeah. Just to get the number out of the way. I'm here before mm -hmm. I'm going to the store. Right. You now know? you go yeah. mingle. Now I, you go mingle. You have a drink. You don't have a drink, you get on stage. These comics that have a drink and mingle, ha, ha, ha. I don't do nothing. Even in those days when I was fiended out, uh -huh. I don't do nothing until I get on stage. Once you get on stage, then you talk and you fucking laugh and you giggle. Until you get on stage, <laughs> there ain't nothing to fucking giggle about. You know, when I was a, a young comic, I'd get up at 7 in the morning. Listen, when I was a thief, when I was a thief, I'd get up at 7 in the morning. i go, you know what, I got $4 for breakfast, but i got to figure out what my next score is for the day. When you become a comic and you open your eyes, beside your first thought of the day, which is I'm alive, I can't believe it, I did coke last night, Fuck is yeah. where am I doing comedy tonight? 
That's mm-hmm. it. Why you pissing? Up. Why you pissing? You're like it's Tuesday. <coughs> mm-hmm. Who do I gotta call? You're already planning your fucking your comedy day. Hell yeah. You're already planning your fucking comedy day at seven in the morning. You're already thinking to yourself, okay, it's mm-hmm. Tuesday. I'm gonna go here tonight. I'm gonna go there tonight. I don't have nothing to do. I don't do have I no need audition. a ride? You know what I mean? It's someone going over there. Who's picking me up? Who am I Fuck driving yeah. up there with? It's fucking amazing. Yeah. That's why I get blown away at people who don't do much, and then they like, nothing's happening. Well, because you jump in this shit. motherfucker. Call somebody. We, Felipe, you, there was a handful of us that were out five nights of fucking Edwin, week. Jeff. Edwin, Jeff goes out still. I know. I see him. He's going to be at second base tomorrow. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he loves it. He He's loves it. Every night. He'll do yeah. the second base to the ha-ha. Yeah. <laughs> this is a guy that's been doing comedy 20 fucking years, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he is a driver now. Why? He can't drive? No, it's just that he's like, he's going to get fucked up. So he has his assistant drive him to all the clubs. And, and like, hey, we can, we're going to get fucked up, but you can't. <laughs> Hilarious. And she's pretty. It's that one girl that always hangs around in Samantha. Or, yeah, Samantha. Is that She's his assistant his, or his, his girlfriend? His, no, it's his babysitter and his assistant. Okay. No, he, he multitask her. And it's, <laughs> it's crazy because, like, they're there and they're all partying, but it's cool, Jeff. I, I love that dude. He's in, he's, he don't care. He's, he's working. He don't care. He's working. God bless him. He yeah. really is. J- Frazier Smith yeah. is out every night with that suit on. <laughs> Fucking bang. He does a radio show Sundays at 11. You know, Damn. this is a guy that's been doing it for 30 years because this is second hand to you. You know, you know, I went to Vegas this weekend and I worked out hard all week. So Friday I took the day off. Saturday I was doing the special. And I go, you know what? I'm not going to work out. The biggest fucking mistake I made on Saturday. Yeah, because that energy, you didn't get that energy. I didn't get that energy. And then Sunday I said, fuck it. Today I'm going to go fucking work out, you know. And it's so weird that when you don't work, like I was confused after I ate lunch Sunday. Something wasn't right. Yeah. right. What'd you eat? Room. Nothing. I had a salad. Oh. But I went to my room and something wasn't right. I go, I know what this is. I took a baby aspirin. I wrapped my wrist and I went right to that fucking gym. And when I left there, I was like, how, was, how did I do Sunday night? It was good. It was a different. A lot fucking better and different. Fuck yeah. You know, because it becomes second nature. Working out does, I don't, it's how you look at things. Fuck yeah. It's, how, it's always how you look at things. You yeah. can look at things as work or you can look at things like, I'm going to go fucking have fun. I fucking hate getting on a plane when I got to go do comedy. I always talk to myself. I try to talk myself <laughs> out of it and shit. But then I realize it's going to fucking be fun. I'm going to go to a hotel. I'm going to eat something good from the area. I'm going to work out. I'm going to smoke pot. I'm going to get to see some people from Twitter. I'm yeah. going to crack some jokes, try a few new jokes. In the worst case scenario, I bring a check home. Who, who fucking lives like that? Who gets to crack joke and mingle and fucking bring a check home? But plus, you didn't do poorly on saturday you killed it saturday but it the was energy great. was completely different than sunday so, but sunday wasn't well, i don't think would have been a couple a good people sp- walked out i got an email dog guy, yeah guy hit me up today <laughs> he's like listen man i went to see you from recommendation me and my wife and 10 other women walked out and she said he goes cosby work clean why can't you and i said first of all i'm happy that you and those fucking hags left as a matter of fact, Cosby's a rapist, you fucking idiot. And next time, have your wife send me the email and go put a tampon on. Something crazy. Because it's true. Who writes an email like that? A Monday yeah. fucking morning to somebody. Me and my wife left. Fuck you and your cunt wife. Yeah. You should have let her go and you stayed. You could have had a good time, but you ain't got no fucking balls. You got up and left with her. You wanted to hear a good pussy joke and take your wife upstairs and fuck her in the ass. That's exactly what you need. Somebody to suck that fucking twat dry and squeeze <laughs> the fucking Christian juice out of that fucking pussy. And that's the end of that fucking, I didn't like him because he was dirty. That's what the problem with those women wow. is. That's nobody's taking them and tackled them shoulder down and yeah. ripped those fucking panties off. Fuck Fingered no. that motherfucker and then put your mouth on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Suck that fucking motherfucker. <laughs> you're choking, you're spitting back in it, you're sucking your own spit. They Hell hear yeah. all that shit, they're like, this motherfucker, <laughs> this Hell motherfucker's yeah. running shit. Where's Tony Bennett, cocksuckers? Hell yeah, man. The girls I'm with, they call me prison dick. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Get that burpee action going. My house laying fucking attitude and shit. <laughs> it's Monday, cocksuckers. <laughs> fucking old bitches of this shit.
guy's still singing at 80. Wow. As I... Are you fucking kidding me? Lee LaRue in the fucking house tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it up. Keep it up, Lee. We can, we're rocking here. Fucking beautiful. Another fucking star this weekend was my girl Liz, fucking photographer extraordinaire, came out on an email. She was dynamite. She was trying to pervert Lee. Poor Lee was hiding in his room and shit. He was scared to be alone with her. Oh, yeah. Fucking Lee. Lee had no. a little crush on her. She's cute as fuck. Lee had a little crush on her. She was telling Lee dirty things. His head almost exploded and shit. Poor she Lee. was spitting game at you, Lee? You didn't do nah, nothing? She no, she has a boyfriend. She has a boyfriend. Lee's got a girl. Oh, okay. But she's cute as fuck. I want to thank her, too, for That's what's uh, up. taking fucking pictures. It was a nice time. I had a nice time with her. I, just don't, I still don't like working Sundays, though. Why? I fucking hate it. I fucking I hate lying Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know why, too, because you told me you always like to be home Monday to start the week off. I start the week off. Fucking what are you making the most for? <laughs> I got a good idea. What happened? No. Uh, well, what if we released? Because we, we, we recorded Sunday, mm-hmm. too, but they didn't. We, we didn't the, everyone has the day off, so we didn't have the lights. What if we could release that one as like a, I still don't like working Sundays. So like the lighting doesn't even look that good. And it's like a, kind of a weird people are walking out. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to your fucking coma, <laughs> Look at the shape of you, fuck. I love it. How many yeah. nights is this in a row? You've been going straight since Friday oh, I night. have no idea. Wednesday? Yeah, but you were off Thursday. Thursday, you went to Vegas. You fucking mucked around. You lost money. You even won money again this fucking Jew this weekend. Oh, yeah? He had a two-team parlay in football. He didn't fuck around. Oh, shit. He had Dallas with Romo breaking. When you fucking take Dallas and Romo breaks his fucking collarbone and he's still covering, yeah. you're a bad motherfucker. Straight up. Hell it's yeah. Rosh Hashanah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was good. It was, but, man, you, 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 what about you? I didn't do dick. Wait, so, I didn't yeah, gamble. You just kicked it or what? Not gambling. Was it special? The special was fucking tremendous with you guys. I had it. And Joey Filato came, my buddy from Jersey. And it's funny, dog. He's got a he had a cousin that died. God rest his soul. He's my brother. I loved him with all my heart. He was a twenty four hour fucking criminal, bro. But this Damn. guy was my biggest comedy supporter. Okay. And here I am, fifteen years later, with his fucking cousin there with me. I was at one point. I was like, "What? Is this like his spirit here? The fucking guy?" Fuck and yeah. he was there. He was fucking there, Darren. It was a great time, man. What we about had... Edwin? Did you see Edwin? I didn't see Edwin at all. Oh, okay. Last time I saw Edwin in that casino, he sparked the fucking joint and almost choked him, bro. <laughs> sparked the joint in the fucking casino. I'm wow. Like, you're embarrassing me. This is why I do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. You no, I didn't, I didn't see anybody. I didn't fucking even go to... They do like a comics reunion. I didn't go to the midnight. Listen, man, I got up at four in the fucking morning to go to, San, to, go to Las Vegas Friday morning. I did a show, I fucking did interviews, I made calls, I tried to write, then we shot like a pseudo fucking special just to run through. When I got out of there, what did we do? We went and ate, yeah. and we went back to the room, and I went to fucking sleep, Jack. You know, I'm tired. Yeah. You know, I can't fucking stay out no more and drink. I had two drinks, I got heartburn. <laughs> I got fucking heartburn, man. I, you know how bad I want a margarita, but I don't really have heartburn, because these motherfuckers put that sweet and sour bubble fucking drink in there. I want the real shit. I want a Cointreau Hell with yeah. some fucking top shelf motherfucking tequila and some homemade fucking lime juice and Hell shit yeah. where you, you squeeze, squeeze the fucking and... limes. Hell That's yeah. the margaritas I'm used to drinking. These fucking Harvey homos, they put fucking that sweet and sour mix. That shit will give me acid indigestion for 12 fucking years. Not even get fucking acid indigestion. I don't, I don't suffer from fucking agita. But every time I have a margarita with that shit in it, my, this guy said he had a... What'd you have a that Long was horrible? A Long Island that was, it was all it was lemonade. Dog, I used to eat quaaludes and drink Long Islands when I was like 17 at Gennaro's in Hoboken. Wow. I used to get fucked up, dog. A good Fuck. Long Island, four light alcohol, some sweet and sour. Yeah. You get fucked up. You top that motherfucker with some good shit. You shake that nigga up. Stop it. <laughs> 
stop it with some fucking Gorilla Biscuits. You get fucked up, Jack. Damn. I would love to be able to drink a good fucking, what is that? Uh, Long, Island? Long Island? It's everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, the four fuck. light alcohols, yeah. a little bit of Coke. And fucking Sa- sweet and sour. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck yeah. you think you're dealing with? Some fucking novice? But that's what I'm saying. It's like, a, it's like what is it, four, six shots? All in one? It's a, it's a big drink. It's a big fucking drink, for sure. But it could taste like asshole, or it could taste delicious. There's some people that make yeah. a fucking Long Island that you don't even taste it going down. Look, I was, I was drinking Makers and Cokes all night, and I, I, was, I got sober when I had the Long Island. Like, well, there was no alcohol in it. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. I remember when I was 17, we used to sniff paint. That was the old school. Ch- that was the cholo shit back then. You'd get that Dutch boy gold, put it in the brown bag. <laughs> How fucked up is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like about like smoking five blunts all at now, once. Now, why do you get pimples on your neck? Because Sticky Charlie, this kid, when I was a guy, whenever we used to make him smoke paint. Oh, yeah? He would snort like rust- rustoleum. Yeah. He would snort fucking <laughs> rustoleum, dog. And he would get, after like a week, he would get zits on his Probably because he's scratching himself. Something like that. Yeah. Boils, they were like blisters. And and plus, like when, when people touch dope, it's in your hands and it goes in your pores. That's why a lot of tweakers, they scratch your heads and they get these big old scabs. I used to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my head, on my face, my legs. Oh, I, shit. I'd feel f***ing in my face. I'd be picking that motherfucker till four in the morning with the coke. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> squeezing shit and guts out of my face like an animal. Uh. That's why yeah. I'm all fucking scarred up. I can't believe you snorted paint. I thought about it. Why? I thought I ate fucking cat food at a party one night and smoked a cigarette. That type of shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are you not supposed yeah, to I do? I don't know. They say you get fucked up. You eat a little yeah. cat food out of a bag and you smoke some fucking cigarettes and something in it fucks you up. I was like fucking 12. What the fuck did I know? You know what I'm saying? Dude, the craziest shit I did recently is I didn't know, but this guy cut Coke with Adderall. Man. Oh, fuck. Is it crazy? It's like the, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, it'd be like smoking speed and then someone snuck in like a big old rock hit. So it was like you were up, but then you were like panicking. You know what I mean? You were like tweaking and then like, but you were in panic mode and it was just like, what the fuck? No, 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 no. That doesn't sound good. I know, that's what Mm -hmm. fucked it up, but then like, it would fade away. It was weird. It was fucking weird. I remember I stayed until like 6 in the morning. George, I wish that, and I'm not proud of this, but I wish that everybody got to taste cocaine in 1980. Oh, And fuck. what would it would do to you? I, thought I, heard, I heard it was... What they did to the cocaine to get more out of it and what the chemicals they put in. I hear that there's some coke going around that eats your skin. They yeah, it with this thing, it was up in nor- the northeast. Oh my god! You know, I was doing coke towards the end. That was fucking half speed. I was doing coke that you know, yeah. you know. Why, would I, why should yeah. I be sweating and yes. fucking jawing and drenched at I... six in the morning? No, in nineteen eighty, when you did a blast, like I, first time I did coke, I ain't gonna lie, nobody. I didn't get fucking high at all. I didn't know what the fuck people were talking about. <laughs> I thought people were playing a trick on me. Like everybody's like, this shit is tremendous. I'm like, this is. <laughs> Here you go, white people faking. First you were laughing at Saturday Night Live. That shit ain't funny. And now you're telling me this shit gets you high and you feel like you're flo- floating. Once I had a drink with it. Yeah, that's what it gets you. That's when it fucking zoomed me, my mm. jaw. That and me, I still remember, a, a, and I talked to my cousin. The, the, the cousin that didn't call me back, I got very hurt. And one day out of the blue, I got a call. And it's him, and he goes, dog, I don't check my Facebook. My girlfriend found my old Facebook and found the message. And we were talking, and, you know, we've been getting cozy and cozy. Uh-huh. And I asked him, I go, remember the time you picked me up in the airport and you took me to the trailer? And there was an old man that was like fucking 16. He was fucking a 16-year-old chick. And he had a stroller. <laughs> the fuck? And he was doing coke with a robe on. It was fucking tremendous to see. Damn. And I asked him, did he want to do a bump? And he's like, no, 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 no. I've been bumping myself all afternoon. <laughs> he was Cuban and shit. I remember he gave me some coke, dog, that all our eyes were red. Wow. Like, i never forget sitting in the car. I had just gone off the airport. <laughs> Nobody smoked pot. And we each did two little bumps, and we drove, and we had to pull over. That's how high you used to get. You couldn't see. Your, your, your vision played with you. Yeah. Like, your vision played with you, and the f- taste going down your throat. When mm. you go. Yeah. It's a wrap. Throat would, I mean, Lee. Cocaine from 80 to 85 in this country 
was amazing. And then what happened? They couldn't snuck, they couldn't sneak ether into Colombia. So they started cutting it with turpentine and gasoline. Oh, and fuck. that's where crack came in. That's why people were going, I can't snort this shit. So I, remember I bought nine ounces from Danny B one time. They called it cat piss. This Coke was electric. You got fucked up on a little taste. But you could, only, you could only do four bumps. <laughs> the smell in your nose was horrific, dog. You could, uh, <laughs> I would cut it, and people were bringing it back. It was fucking horrendous. Like, you take that Coke, you rock that shit up with some paint, and you, you sell $10 rocks all day. People don't give a fuck that because it burns that shit out when you smoke it. Mm-hmm. So that's where the flavor went. That's, and they even explain that to you on Narcos. That the hardest part, the only thing they don't tell you on Narcos is how they were processing coke in Cuba. They figured out how to get ether into Cuba 90 miles away. So it was a lot ether, easier to process, yeah. process the coke. So now that coke that tasted good went up. And the coke that tasted shitty was down. So when you went to buy coke from a real dealer, you go, I got two options for you. Yeah. I got this shit for 110 or I got this shit for 90 And the shit for 90 was sensational. It just had a weird taste to it. It had like gasoline taste (laughs) or a turpent or it smelled like feet, cheese. Some people had cheese Coke for a while. It was unbearable. So, But that was my question. The good Coke still exists. It's just more expensive. Yeah, it it still exists if you get it from like people that get it from like Mexico. But if you're getting it from another race, it's it's been. I I think Mexicans are cutting it with something. They're they're, they're making, they're doing something. They're making amphetamine in Mexico. Why the fuck? I was in Texas last time. I was in McAllen. Forget about it. I'm Over sure. there, oh fuck! Over there, like weed was the hardest thing to find. Coke was like everybody had. It. Everybody has. There it. was like eight feet in the stall. You ever go by a stall and you see eight feet? It was like, oh yeah, I. Those I took border Butch. towns are brutal. Yeah, I took Butch Escobar with me. He only ate twice. In how many days? <laughs> Four. <laughs> Remember, I told you we stayed at that guy's house with and he the, had the Jesus foot yeah, with the nail in it. He's still booking the room. Right? Yeah, but and you he, don't stay at the house no more. Where do you stay? You stay at this ghetto hotel. Okay. I'm still not going down. No, <laughs> no. I, I was scared that I, I was fucking a cop back then when I went. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. I'll tell you later. A cop <laughs> down there? Yeah, from Westlaco. You still talk to him? Nah. I started dating someone, so I, I stopped. But, you know, I was only down there twice. It's, 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 it's that, that's when you do Brawley. No, you don't do Brawley. You do uh, McAllen, West Laco, and you do La Jolla. And La Jolla is like 30 miles from the border. I wouldn't even say 30. I would say like three, three miles from the border. And there's no security guard. It's all like border patrol, like at the bars. And it was weird. It was the first time I didn't care if I didn't get paid. I remember I performed and I got off stage and I was like, I need to get out of here, dude. Like, I need to get out of here. Me, Joey. Me. Because I can tell everybody looked at me. They're like, hey, homie, you ain't from around here. The Mexicans over here don't, don't, don't have Nikes. You know what I mean? It was weird. And I was like, Shh. they gave me my money, though, and they were like, hey, let's go. And then it, 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 it was crazy. No, there's some places I've been to that you're like, you know what? I won't be coming back in. Because no <laughs> I know Straight. these motherfuckers are going to be ready for me. Straight you up. Know, they're going to know, figure out I'm at a hotel, and they're getting paid with cash, and it's fucking crazy, Lee. It's yeah. fucking crazy. You really, you know. You can see the hunger in their face. One time, I had a problem one time up north. The football coach that used to book Friday nights, and the one time me and Rodrigo and Felipe went, and I thought I bought Coke, but I bought meth. I did it anyway. <laughs> I got fucked up in that room. I was chewing those cigarettes. I was lighting them, and then you could see them going. I put them off. I had the, there was so much smoke in the room. Felipe's like, bro, you have to open up the door. That's how much smoke there was in the fucking room. Wow. I, I had three packs of Camel Lights. I was smoking one after the other on that fucking. Fuck yeah. That's what that speed does to you, man. Oh, my God. I remember we used to smoke it out of like a water bong. My friend would put root beer, and we put ice cream in it. And shh. when speed tastes good, you don't know how much you're smoking. That was some fucking insane shit. We used to steal cars back then. <laughs> you would make root beer float. 
And how do you snort the speed out of speed. it? No, you don't. You burn it. It's like a bong. Because you, you, you have it in a glass stem that has a hole, and then you have another stem that's going into the water and the ice cream of the bong. So the smoke is hitting that, and then you're sucking it out. It tastes like a root beer float. Hell yeah, root and you're beer. you're eating fucking meth like a mother. <laughs> Hell I've never yeah. smoked meth. Oh, my God. Let's go God. smoke some meth tonight, Lee. I'm, I'm <sighs> set, man. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was back then though i didn't know you know what i mean remember when you didn't know what you were doing was bad you're like hey man no one else did it you know what i mean like hey i want to finish my homework in one day fuck it let's go it was crazy back there then. was something about speed that i did it if it was around but it wasn't my first choice yeah exactly i sold black beauties in high school i was telling lee and then in 80 and 80 <laughs> When I was in high school one night, I went to a, a strip club, and some bikers were there, and some guy asked me if I wanted to buy speed, and I bought some crank, whatever they yeah, call it. Yeah, crank. That's exactly what it was crank. called back and it then. Was, uh, it wasn't a powder. It was like little chunks. It I was like that the, peanut I, butter brown back I bought then. A, no, this is white. This is all white oh, okay. in Jersey. This is 1980, and I bought oh, a gram shit. for like 80 bucks, and then we did it. We got fucked up, but it wasn't my calling, and I didn't do it again. To Idaho. I went to the Boise, Idaho Funny Bone that was opening up for Christopher Titus. Oh, wow. And the waitresses were real cool. It's a hippie town at the time. And the waitress took me to this bar to drink pictures. And I'm like, man, I go for a bump. And she's like, I can't get your blow, but I got tons. And they used to put you in this historic hotel that was like there from the 1800s. <laughs> when I went up to that fucking room, that room started creaking. Uh, those floors started creaking I was up for three fucking days on two little <laughs> lines of crank and you know who I watched on television that night without knowing Joe Rogan was on the Dirty Dozen on Showtime oh, shit. hosted by Dom Herrera in 1998 that was a, a series they did 12 episodes the Dirty Dozen just three comics a show and I remember seeing Joe Rogan on there and going I don't know who that fucking guy is <laughs> With a hat on and shit. What the fuck? I was on speed that night. It, yeah. The show came out at 11. I, remember, I was thinking, how can I get on that show? I've been doing comedy maybe. 10? <sighs> no. I had been doing It was before L.A. It was way oh, before L.A. Fuck. 96. Summer in 96. Yes. Yes, because we were all going to the Boise Funny Bone from Seattle. That's when, when me and Josh Wolf robbed that restaurant. That's the alibi he had. That he was at the Boise. The chick liked him. The chick was a little hippie chick that thought she was a comedy guru. That bitch is long gone from comedy. And she used to book that room. That was a fun little fucking room, Boise. Boise Funny Bone was a great little five or six days. But I did fucking heavy duty speed up there. I was Ugh. fucked up. Then I went to West Virginia on a creative run one night. And I asked these good old boys where I could get some shit. And they're like, take a ride with us. <laughs> I drove an hour into the weeds, dog, into a fucking trailer like uh, Breaking Bad. I didn't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> I gave the guy 40 bucks. He came out with a bag of that shit. Damn. I go, how good is this Coke? He goes, it's Coke. We don't sell Coke around here. That shit is crank. I did it. I didn't give a fuck, Jack. And that shit burns your nose. Yeah, it burns crank your... is it's vicious. Vicious, Lisa. Yeah, vicious. And you know what? I... No, and then when I got locked up. Oh, shit, when you I got, got it locked, in there? When I got locked up, there was a white dude, Clark. Either John Clark or Mike Clark. John Clark, solid white dude, tatted up, six foot one. Yeah. Everybody knew this motherfucker was out of his mind, but he was solid, dog. And on Sundays, he'd go in there and swap spit with his girlfriend, and she'd leave the balloon in his mouth. Yeah. And he'd come get me. Come on, let's do a lot of crap. <laughs> and I'd stay up all night sat Saturday, and all night Sunday, visitation. And then all day Monday, but Monday nights was basketball in the gym across the street. So I try oh. to play basketball on the speed. That's a complete different dimension. Oh, fuck, your heart can't your handle heart that. Your heart can't fucking handle that shit. That's why when people go, Lawrence Taylor was playing on cocaine, I'm always like, I don't think so. Yeah. If you've ever done blow. Yeah, not every quarter. No, you can't yeah. be fucking shooting and shit fuck and focusing. no. I couldn't imagine doing a line of coke <laughs> and trying to shoot a 20-footer and shit. Fucking <laughs> dummies. Straight up, or like trying to tackle the quarterback. Like he's playing with the best of the best. Lawrence Taylor, he was taking some hits, but not all game. You think so? Yeah, he he had to. He had to. I remember in high school, I smoked speed like before a game once, just because it was just like. But I, oh yeah, you know it's crazy. When I 
was a kid, Armando Rudy used to tell me, bro, wait till you play basketball and you smoke a joint. When you go to do a layup, <laughs> you just keep going. And the ball rolls off your fingers. And I'm like, oh, my God, how can you play basketball smoking weed? First time I fucking did it, I fell in love with it. Anything smoking weed like Fuck that. That yeah. type of shit where you could think and react different and see what the fuck is crack lacking. What's up, Lisa? Yeah. How you feeling? What'd you eat for dinner tonight, cock liquor? I haven't had dinner yet. Cause no? I, slept, I slept all day. You slept all day? And then I went to the gym. Yeah. You slept all fucking day. Well, right. we had a fucking early flight. But you didn't. I didn't sleep. No, I slept good this weekend, though. I, I was, I was Let me tell you something about sleep, bro. Let me tell you something about sleep. I fuck my sleep up. Half of this stomach, it's not sleep. If you don't sleep, bro, your body don't burn. Your yeah. body doesn't do it. I didn't you know this. To. I didn't know this at a young age. I thought that, fuck these cunts that sleep eight hours. They're fucking pussies. They're missing life. You got to get your eight to seven every night, man. Yeah, you got to charge the battery. You know, I remember last year I was gaining a lot of weight. And I remember I looked. You know, that's when we were doing the church at fucking six. And then I would get up at five to fly out Thursday. And then get up at Friday for radio. Wow. In the East Coast, which is three in the morning. And then you're getting up at fucking Sunday to fly the fuck back. No, I had to cut it out. It was too, I couldn't figure out why I was putting weight. I was Weight Watchers. I lost 130 pounds on Weight Watchers. Now I'm on Weight Watchers gaining fucking weight. I'm like, you know why? You don't fucking sleep. You yeah. gotta fucking sleep. I'll tell you, man, last night I went to the hotel room. I went over my sides and something was coming on that I ran on the watch. And I remember I said, click. I turned that motherfucker off. <laughs> and some, you know what I used to say? If I'm not in bed in 10 minutes, I'll put it back on. You can't do that. No. You got to fucking commit to fucking sleeping. You know what? You fall asleep. You eat three stars. You smoke a joint. You'll fucking fall asleep. Right? Unless you're retarded. You yeah. Know? Unless it just jumps you up for 10 minutes. I go home. I smoke a tea and drink a cup of coffee. I go, what goes up must come down. Mm -hmm. Nice and fucking dead. But that's big, man. That's, what's, that's why I'm doing better on the road. You look That's better. What, you look yeah, rested, too. Yeah, you know? no, bro. You I'm telling you, I'm the type of motherfucker that could go six nights on four hours and think it's cheap. And that shit well, don't... You could you do up. all the lifting. You could drink all the water. You could do whatever the fuck you want. You ain't going to be fucking healthy. So now what I do is when I'm on the road, I let myself stay up late. You know what? I'm not going to fight with you. I just did a show. What, what do you want to do? Right. I got nowhere to go tomorrow. I, I go to bed at 3, dog. I wake up at 6.30. I put a little cup of coffee on. I do a little writing. I smoke a fucking joint. I get two eggs with a piece of wheat toast and three slices of bacon, a fruit cup. <laughs> I put on whatever the fuck is on. My favorite show is Gangland. If it's Friday and I do that shit, <laughs> I got no radio. I throw Gangland on. If you're on the East Coast, Gangland goes till 3 or 4 in the afternoon. I'm learning about fucking everybody. Gangland. The M13s. I know knowledge on all the fucking gangs. Uh, and then I go back to sleep till about 12 or 1. And dog. Three and four is seven. I'm good. Four solid. After a joint and breakfast, two eggs put my shit right to fucking sleep. Yeah. And I did that all three days in Vegas. So I knew Monday morning I had to go right to an audition. I could not stay out fucking Friday night. I didn't want to mm -hmm. eat late because I didn't want that shit in my stomach when I'm sleeping. That's yeah. another thing. You go to bed at 12 and you eat a fucking sandwich, you're not going to fall asleep. Your stomach is digesting it. You're going to have nightmares that you're in a deli getting fucked in the ass. <laughs> you ever eat like a pepperoni sandwich late night? That spicy shit. Next thing yeah. you're in a deli and the Sopranos are fucking you up the ass. You're like, why do I have those type of dreams? Because your fucking whole body's trying to fucking digest the food. I used to love to eat late night, bro. I'm a fucking believer. Yeah. Right after in a comedy. Good fucking steak before you go to bed, you sleep like a baby. No, you don't. Your body's up all fucking night. You're asleep. You go on to the third decibel. You're supposed to hit six. You're on three. Do you like A1 steak sauce? It was all over the East Coast, and I haven't had it for years. And now I'm just remembering how disgusting it is. I've put A1 steak sauce on. There used to be a place in New York City called Tad Steakhouse. They got one in San Francisco, Kansas City. Never Let me tell you it. something. 30 years ago, though, you go into a Tad Steakhouse for six ninety five. They give you a T-bone, a baked potato. A salad, a thing of jello, and a soda. It wasn't a bad steak. It wasn't, you know. Was that a lot of money back then? Six bucks was like 15 now, 20 now. Oh, okay. So I go in there and I tell the guy, yo, let me get a steak. And I look at the, I make, because they cook, the thing was they cooked the steak in front of you, but it was cafeteria style. Oh. So I would tell the guy, I put a fin on the guy, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> money talks and bullshit walks. I make eye contact with the guy and right over the counter right there without nobody seeing, I give him a fin. He'd open up the tray in front of me, 
And I go pick the best one in that motherfucker. And I see him looking around for the thick ones, the ones they had yeah. hidden. <laughs> and they throw one of those things on for Joey. Medium fucking well. He carry it down the fucking line. Wow. You pick up your toss salad with ranch. In those days, I used to use French dressing. When I was a kid, I loved French dressing. Yeah. It, what color is that? Puke. Yeah. It's, it's like, like that orange weird, fucking yeah. puke with chunks in it. French and Russian, that was my shit when I was a kid, dog. Fuck. With some lettuce and some tomatoes and some raw onions, some salt and pepper. You mix that shit up good, that orange shit. Fucking delicious. Ugh. And you get jello with cube and you put some whipped cream on that motherfucker. Wow, that's such an old school meal. Oh my God. <laughs> I love jello. That's the white man in me. Oh, yeah. jello with whipped cream. Gelatina. Oh shit, when I was in prison, they give jello on that. Oh, I'll give you my yeah. milk. I'll give you my milk for jello, dog. Give me yeah. milk. And there was like a good portion they gave you they the give jello. You, yeah, it cost two fucking, it cost minus two cents. For fucking 10 cents, you can make a tray of fucking jello. You ever notice that? You can eat jello for a year for a dollar fifty. You get another can of whipped cream. Who's better than you? I fuck around with my jello. In yeah. the old days, they used to have a jello mix that you would make, and you had to get a glass and then tip it in the refrigerator. Nobody remembers this shit. Nobody remember. You remember at least I yeah, had to be like hot oh, or something. Chubby kids did that shit. You had to like boil it or something you and then put it in. And put it in and, and the bottom would get dark, the middle, and it would get light. And you took one of that shit and put whipped cream on it. Good googly moogly. <laughs> Good googly moogly. Dang. Yeah, have you ever had an icebox cake? No. What is the icebox oh, cake? Oh, it's so fucking good. My friend's Filipino. She makes them for a living part time. I, the one, the one my mom makes is just like the in like instead of like the instant Jello, it's the instant pudding, and you make that, and it's like layers of that and graham crackers, and then you put it in the freezer until it freezes, and then it's just that and whipped cream. Good Google, it's amazing. Wow, I knocked the fuck a motherfucker up for three days. Where'd yeah. you grow up, George? I grew up in Orange County, Orange. And you played high school football. All this yeah, shit. I played basketball, football, and fucked around like a motherfucker. You had all the recipes to be a regular kid, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, it was just every, everybody that I grew up with was like, "Yo, man, there's there's another gang over there, so we're just gonna make our own gang." And it wasn't even like race; it was everybody that lived on that side of town. Didn't matter, Mexican. Hell black, no, we white. had Mexican, Filipino, white. It was Indian. Yeah, it was it was it was fun, but like we we weren't the kind of people that were like, "Hey, dog, like if you got a family, you gotta go. We're still friends, you know." We were just like, uh, they should do a gangland about you, like the nice. Hell gang. no, I'll never get on that shit and talk. <laughs> nah, uh, gangland. That's for like people that want to be like. I don't. I don't even know if those guys are real. I, I don't, don't think so either. I look at sometimes. I'm like, hey, homie, you ain't no dude. Yeah, like, we were selling kilos. Then why are you fucking telling this story? <laughs> exactly. Like, what the fuck? Like, you get to say it and play it. That's crazy. I sold some ounces. That was a loser deal. I didn't make a fucking dime. I snorted every fucking dime I ever made as a yeah. coke deal. I was a loser fucking coke deal. I made money <laughs> for a while, and I'd turn it around. I'd make a little money yeah. and snort that motherfucker down. You know, the, the black crew from Atlanta. Did you ever see that one? No. The whatever brothers that had the party. They made rap videos, and they paid somebody a half a million to do a rap video. Yeah. Those guys, like 20 of them, they yeah. all Maseratis and they can They came The down. twins, the two brothers. Mm -hmm. One brother, they found them in Miami and the other brother, they had 92 cars. They designed the cars with the compartments in them so you could travel all around. Some of those ganglands are fucking interesting as fuck. Yeah, far. yeah. I, Just to I, see the I think the culture. black ones are real. I really do. I think the black ones are real. I think like the I black always ones watch are real. those and I always ask myself, why didn't I ever get involved with those people growing? Like when I grew up, there was no gang in New Jersey. No? There was a biker gang that when I was really young, a freshman, eighth grade, and I'd go up down, I'd walk past their house and they'd invite me in and they'd give me a beer. I don't know who the fuck they were. But gang is this kid. Now where I live, there's Latin gangs. Yeah. Now where I live, I hear that there's Latin Kings. They okay. come off from New York and they're in Union City. <laughs> and I saw something about Union City, the Latin Kings. You ever watch those shows and see it? I yeah. love those prison shows. At yeah. Night on Saturday oh, yeah. Night. I've seen all of them. I can't watch them anymore. I've seen all of them. No, there's a new one with guards. Yeah, the rookie. Guard, guards in training, the yeah, rookie. Yeah, it's the rookie. Bad. That's just funny. Dude, they I, found the syringe the other night and <laughs> shit. I was going to watch the second one. That's the show. I was going to turn it off. I like those shows so much. I found there was a show on Netflix a while ago about the cops at mall of america it's like a 12 episode one season show i watched all of it and they're investigating like sweatshirts and 
crazy weird shit, but it's just like those shows are so fun to watch. But because it's, it's just so scary, it's just weird. I'm really surprised you guys watch them. I watch them because like I lived it, and I want to see how accurate it is. At the end of the day, I give it like my overall rating, and I'll be like, "Oh shit! Like that really did happen." So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a judge. Is that, like, is that your rating? You're like you're like this one got the oh shit. Yeah, like hey, damn dog! Like, I remember something like that happened when I was there. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty weird. For me, I watch it and I think about the situation I got myself in. How bad it really could have been. I see those guys yeah. are doing thirty years. My first plea bargain was twelve years and kidnapping one. Damn. He was a black attorney, Sonny Flowers. In fact, somebody just hit me up. And he kinda like was part of them. You know, he was the black guy that hi, how you doing? My name is Sonny. So the first deal he came at me with was twelve years. Then he came at me with kidnapping two and nine years, but a violent crime. You do nine years yeah. in front of the parole board, man. Mm-hmm. So think about it. My life would have been completely fucking different. Completely different. Just, just a couple years. Yeah. Just a couple years, six months. That day that some guy said something, I hit him with a shiv, and now you pick up another three. Now you got a jacket. That Now you go somewhere higher, and you stab some. You know, a thousand. That's When I watch those shows, I get entertained, but at the same time, my mind's drifting because I'm thinking, what if? That's me, dog. That's me. I watched the episode yeah. where the guy said something. He goes, well, and he stepped up to the police guy. I did that a few times, but I knew in the back of my head, you're not getting nowhere. You're just yeah. having a bad fucking day. Exactly. You're just having a bad you day. Have to vent. Hey, dog, put those sneakers away. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah. Put those fucking, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm over here. Uh, and you don't even know because there's days where these four walls do get to you. Fuck, these yeah. 60 fucking guys or these 100 guys do get to you. Yeah. You have bad days and good days. Is it scary when you see it? Because I, I saw a fist fight today. And it was like kind of, I, I, I didn't know if I should go to the store or not. Like the people were just fighting outside of a store. You just walk in. Mind your fucking business. Listen, if they're going to shoot each other, they're going <laughs> to shoot each other within the first three minutes. They didn't have if, guns. If they're out there swinging it out, if one guy goes down and he gets up and he runs to his car, then you fucking run. Yeah. But if he's not, you know, it's like that scene in Good Guys Wear Black in the beginning where the guy goes, let me go get money out of my car. And he gets a gun and he comes back. That's it. You got a problem. Once they go yeah. in the car, <laughs> you start running like a motherfucker. That's got nothing to do with you. Uh-huh. But a good fist fight, you got to watch from time to time just to see how fucked up it is out there. How fucked up and how quick this could happen. Straight how up. How quick you could be walking with Paula down the street and some guy don't like that shirt. He's drunk. And he'll say something, he'll smack you in front of Paul. How fucking fast that could happen. That's a reality. It could happen to me walking down the street with my wife. I walk into the route, there's two dudes. They're just having a bad day. One kicks me in the stomach. That's how fast. <laughs> that's how fast. That's how fast your life could change, man. The reason why I stopped playing blackjack last night was this dude came in and sat down next to us and said, Hey, what casino am I in? And the thing about the South Point is it's not next to anything. It's not like the stripper could be in any, like, and you have a thousand casinos. There's only one casino there. And he, and he just started saying weird shit to the poor little, like, 18-year-old dealer girl with blonde hair. He's like, I have rope somewhere. And he, like, just like, he's, like, I, he, no, he's like, I get kicked out of places. Like, he was just getting real creepy. Oh, and I, just I get him. kicked out. Listen, not for nothing. Every fucking casino is creepy as fuck. Yeah. Listen, I don't care where you go, dog. When you're walking through those casinos, you see people. Yeah, the vibe changes automatically. I don't care where the fuck casino they're at. From the SLS <laughs> to the South Point to that fucking hotel we saw when we were pulling out, when we were going with somebody. Were you with us? Or oh, was me, Joey Falada, and his wife were going to do MMA Junkie on the way to Mandalay Bay. We saw a hotel. We're like, who the fuck stays in there? People stay in there, dog. Vegas is the real deal. Holy field. Listen, man, I want to give some shout outs. My man Bradford. Uh, get well, cocksucker. I know you're Achilles tendon. Johnny and Laura, congratulations. I want to give a shout out to my brother, Burbank 818. Fucking telling people to retweet and shit. Get it together, you fuckhead. You know, I love you. My favorite fucking Armenian. Zach Bjork, Gustavo Sedeno, John Murphy, Daniel Riley, Amy. And my man Dave, John Cutler, for sending me a beautiful fucking Latin jazz CD. 
But the shout out this week goes to Lee Syatt and Talking Lab for fucking being uh, the anchors of the special. This episode's well, shout you, out to you and my man Talking Lab. He even brought me Nutter Butters. He brought me Oreos, but I couldn't take he them. He brought me they... Oreos too. I brought them home. I still didn't dig into them. That's he right, got me Keith. a strawberry shortcake. I mean, that guy is very good to me. I love him like a brother. Like I said, you meet people on this Twitter mission that you end up falling in love with. I would move to Vegas because I knew that Talking Lab was there. Oh, I knew shit. that he had my back. You know those people that yeah. you, know, you call at four in the morning, they're like, I'll be there with a bazooka and I got <laughs> some throwing stars. That's Talking Lab, you know? Talking Lab would have like a little camera set up there. Just He'd already know, like even before he called, he'd be like, oh, I'm already on the way, Joey. No, this just uh, all that shit was great. So it's five years you've been out. Think of all the things you did in five years, George Perez, from the from the fucking shows with your boy from the '70s show. Well, you did that before you got locked up. Yeah, I did that before I got. So locked So when you up. went to prison, you were a celebrity there. People wanted to fucking jam with you, mama jokes. Nah, and yeah, shit. N- yeah. Nobody knew until like later, like my last year and a half or two years, maybe. That's when everybody was just like, "Hey, dog," we because like. We found a way to get MTV3 on our TV. Like, the homie that did, like, electricity plugged the main wire for, for like, the dorm into the to the TV room. So MTV3 comes out, and it's old reruns of your mama. And everybody's, like, looking like, hey, is that fucking you? And I was like, yeah. And then after that, it was just, like, bada-bing. You know what I mean? But I really didn't want no one to talk to me. I, I didn't want, I don't know. The less friends you have is the better, right? Why, why do you want to be a celebrity in there? But it, it happened, and I and I ran with it as far as, like, uh, living life. I mean, it was cool, but it wasn't. At the, at the same time, you know how it is. Other races are just like, I don't give a fuck if you're funny. When did you get out, George? <laughs> I got out in 2009. You know? I got locked up in 2006. For me, it's not who I was. But it's who I am. Like, I got locked up. I'm not yeah. ashamed of it. I don't give a fuck. I got locked up. I did something wrong. Yeah. I paid my debt at the time. I could have gone to fucking Honduras and rented cars. <laughs> and I could have come back now. Where would my life be? I wouldn't have had my own life. Now nah, you'd be on the run still. You know, I, 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 I remember months before the thing, I thought I was going to be the kidnapping case. Like, that's how delusional I was. Like, I, was, I knew I wasn't going to take it to court. But I had a doubt. I, like, I'm like, I'll kill the fucking victim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted him to disappear. I thought he would disappear on his own, but he didn't. Yeah. I'm happy he's still alive. But the point being that it's like, I still think about it once a day, every fucking day. At some point of the day, I think about Fuck my mother. Yeah. I think about my friends, what they mean to me. I think about doing that stretch, whether it's two minutes on the bus ride or, you know, laughing in jail. When you laugh in jail, you fucking laugh. Like, I laughed oh, a yeah. lot. Those black motherfuckers are fucking High, Larius with a capital H. From doc- I remember I started for the first two weeks I didn't giggle or nothing, and then in diagnostic I would fucking howl because there was a black dude that would call his wife every night, yell at her for twenty minutes. <laughs> like it would start off good, like yeah, I miss you and shit, honey. Yeah, I'm over here with the Cuban and shit. And then like you know you call them and you get collect calls. Yeah. The conversation would turn after like eight minutes, and they would start yelling at each other on the phone, and then they would go, "Fuck you, bitch! Don't call back!" And he'd hang up on her, and he'd go to his cell, and I'd go, "She don't, she can't call you. You just ended the phone call in a bad way. Now all night you're gonna be thinking about that beef, and you call can't call that bitch back and apologize. Now you gotta write letters all night and make sure the fucking horse leaves on time at five a.m. It's a fucking nightmare to have an argument with your girlfriend and shit like, but." That's not the point at hand. The point at hand was how, for me, I wear it with a badge of honor. Like, if you go to Vietnam for me and you come back with a medal, that's what I did. Because it was. I did get a medal from it. No, I, I got a medal from going to prison. Yeah, it's an experience. I got a medal from going to prison because I did something with what I learned. I talk about it today, and I did something with it, you know. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Talking Lair, and he was talking about success and what success is to me. Listen, man, I'm happy about one thing in this life. I did something with my life. Yeah, it's not even about success, guys. It's not about success. It's at 40 years old, you pay a mortgage. You're not the richest guy in the world. You got 280 in the bank. You got 600 in your Christmas club. You got a nice wife, a few kids. And so what? You didn't become president. So what? You didn't make it to the Boston Red Sox. 
So what? You're not driving a Maserati. You're way better off than a lot of fucking people. And yeah. the most important thing, you did something with your life. These people that dream of being celebrities or wanting to see celebrities or I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That's all great and dandy, but they're not happy with what the fuck they have. I've been happy with myself for like fucking five years, man. Just waking up in the morning. Yeah. Didn't fucking, who needs a million dollars, man? That's what you need to make you happy. Boy, are you going to have a hard fucking life. Because that's what I thought. Until about 30, that's what I thought. That if you didn't have 50000 in your pocket, you weren't going to have no friends. Then you realize, who the fuck wants friends if I need $40,000? Yeah. I want friends like this fucking the go cheer that'll die, live and die for you, and they, you know, he knows the same from me. We don't, we don't even fucking, uh, you know, it's not like I fucking pay his rent or nothing like that. He works for his fucking money, man. So, it's so weird. Like for me, I'm just happy that I'm not locked up. I'm happy that I'm not living in a fucking basement with four other guys smoking crack. Do you ever have nightmares about being locked up? Like, like you get locked up again? I used to get that a lot. I have nightmares about everything. I have, <laughs> I have nightmares about people doing blow with me, about women. Oh, me, you know, I just have nightmares, man. You got listen. Where I came from, if I don't have a nightmare once a week or a bad dream, I'm not real. You got to, you have to live this shit in your mind somewhere. Yeah. I tell people all the time, you got to check on your skeletons, bro, from time to time. Because if not, they're going to check on your motherfucking ass. And that's not a good check. No. Sometimes at night I smoke a fucking joint and my mind goes somewhere. And I start thinking about <laughs> dark times and shit. And I relive it. I cry a little bit. You know, I giggle. And I go, fuck, that's a scary time. I do the sign of the cross. And I leave that motherfucking thought where the fuck it is, you know. Oh, I write sometimes in the morning. I remember shit. Like, I'm trying to write this story for Ari's thing. Dog, I was a hellion. I robbed this dude and I caused a lot of havoc. And oh, shit. Yeah. And, you know, you think about all that shit, and I can feel bad about it. That, that's not the person I am today. It's not at all, you know? Yeah, I go back in time a lot, too, and I just trip out. Like, fuck, like, back in my era, like, we fought a lot. You know what I mean? Like, we, we really, I, I wasn't the kind of kid that stole shit, because I remember one time we tried to do, like, a home invasion. And I was just like, we couldn't get in the house. I was happy. I was like, fuck, dude, I'm, let's get the fuck out of here. I remember just going, I got to go to football practice, like, in two hours. What the fuck is going on? Just that word, home invasion. I yeah. I did those things for yeah. drugs, but I don't look at them as a home invasion because just the word home invasion makes me fucking nervous. Yeah. Makes you nervous. The last time I did that with my buddy and I went in there with a gun dog, I remember leaving there going, somebody could have fucking shot me. He used to yeah. handcuff him with the fucking suit on, with oh, the, the DEA jacket. Guys, you have no fucking idea what fear is. You have no fucking idea what fear is, bro. I was telling you how you go deaf. Every time I was about to do something bad, bro, I would go deaf, and I could feel my heart beat. Every movement in my chest. Da, 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 it's da, showtime. It's like a Pink Floyd fight. It's showtime. Yeah. That's the same adrenaline you get when you get into a fight, or you yeah. get a knife pulled on you, or the cops are chasing you. But when I would crawl through a window, I was ripping your shit apart looking for that <laughs> coat. I still remember the day I kidnapped Bella when I went back and ripped his heart. His, he had one of those ceilings, suspended ceilings, that have the cubes inside that you pick them up and you can hide shit in there yeah. and drop the ceiling. So I'll never forget that I jumped up and grabbed onto those ceilings. At that time, I was 220, 225. And I remember with every fucking piece of strength I heard, <laughs> I ripped that fucking ceiling down. The whole building heard it. The whole building <laughs> heard the thing go, wham, wham, wham. I didn't give a fuck. I was deaf. My heart was <laughs> pumping. I cut my hand. You used to cut yourself. That's why I knew OJ killed his wife. Because when you're killing the motherfucker, your adrenaline is so yeah, high, you don't you're feel cutting it. your hand. You ain't feeling it. I wouldn't feel shit till I got back. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. I got caught on a bob wire. You know, I'm fucking <laughs> bleeding. You wouldn't fucking feel it. I would go up to a window, smash it, open the window, crawl in, and cut yourself for something on the way in. You're ripping wow. shit. You're opening up desks. You're throwing dishes. You're looking for shit, man. You, what do you think? You look for shit neatly? Yeah, when I rub people I knew. <laughs> I didn't make a mess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I didn't know him, you have to make a fucking mess. If you know him, you can't make a mess. You want, you want the element of fucking surprise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Lisa? I at you, little fucker, bad motherfucker. You. It was just a great weekend, man. It was uh, it was fun to see you do it. Finally, do a special. Twenty four fucking years. I did pieces on it, and I never did a special. Nobody was gonna offer me a special, George. 
you know, the deal. So you just did it on your own, independent? And I told Lee. We and Lee had conversations. I called him like a week ago, and I told him what was going to happen. I go, listen, we're going to do it. People are going to jump on. They want to help. Nobody's going to fucking sell it. We're going to get nothing. We're going to get fucking nothing. Let's just do it ourselves. We'll make a little money. We won't make nothing. But at least I did it. Yeah. And it's better than sitting there going, we'll do it in November. We'll do it in January. That's what we're doing for two fucking years. You know me, yeah. Lee. I procrastinate like anybody fucking else, you know. And Lee kept pushing me. I got to give him credit. And finally, I just put two and two together. And I said, I'll do it there. And that's it. You know, hopefully you'll do one soon and we could be yes. on the same fucking network together. Yes, yes. I'm actually working on it myself. So we'll see what's going on. Because, you know, it does. It takes a while. You got to get the right money, the right location. I don't want to, like, do it and, like, go around, cut corners. You know what I mean? I want to do it legit. Well, here's the problem with specials, the CDs. That if a company comes to you, they're going to go, wow, George Perez, we really love you. We're really, we're going to put about 80000 into your CD. Tell them, Lee. You know, if you wire the fucking room and put it into the thing, it don't cost no 80000 for no, no. fucking yeah. CD. Marketing, who are you going to call? Comedy 24-7, they'll do it for fucking free. Uh, what, the rapper on the CD and the cases? You get 50 cases for two fucking dollars. So what costs? What's the eighty fucking thousand? Go shoot a special. Talk to people about shooting specials. It's two hundred thousand dollars. I want to know where. <laughs> what, what does that cover? The ten first class seats for everybody to come and drink. That's what that covers. Let's shoot a special. Three, four motherfuckers, hotel rooms, a flight, the rental, the cameras. Everybody works for a fucking little piece of a back end. Let's see what we can fucking do here. Yeah. That's how you fucking shoot a fucking special. And at the end, you go, wow. I spent eighteen thousand. What were they talking about for three hundred thousand? Like new wave. We oh, spend wow. one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I'm sure you fucking do. No, you don't. You pay all these motherfucking immigrant wages. You, <laughs> you pay them six, but you tell me you pay them twelve. You follow what I'm saying yeah, to you? Yeah. So that six goes right into your fucking pocket. That's that's what the mafia did for twenty years. That's called hiring non-union fucking labor mm -hmm. and paying them non-union. What do you do with that extra twenty dollars? That goes in your pocket. That's what how the yeah. That's what happened. You're supposed to get twenty nine, but I got a fucking Spanish dude who'll do it for nine. Yeah, you know. And I put ten of those guys on the job instead of ten fucking uh, whatever. Nine guys. If you got nine guys and you're clipping twenty dollars an hour from nine guys 180. a day, one eighty times nine. That's a lot. That's how the mafia made their fucking money, and that's what they try to do with your labor. Lee went there for a fucking job, and they weren't. They want to pay him shit. So they're coming to you saying, yeah, what about the editors? We're paying them 3000 an hour. Lee was like, they were the worst offer I ever got up front. So, Shit. you know, they're lying to you. They say, oh, no, we advertise in Rolling Stone. No, you fucking don't. No, you fucking don't. You got <laughs> some fucking Nicaraguans downtown who print the fucking things. <laughs> but we make posters. Yeah, for $200 a poster. That's uh, you, you follow what I'm saying yeah. to you? They do, let, let's get bids on posters. Well, these people say they'll do it for six. These people say they'll do it for nine. These people say they'll do it for 12. Let's go with them. No. Go with the guys for six. I guarantee that you just save money right fucking there. But no, they do everything. They lie to you. I'm not doing that shit. And any marketing that they would do, it's worthless. It's this, worthless. This is all the marketing we need. There's no fucking marketing. There's no marketing. They don't do no marketing. They hire a firm that knows nothing about comedians. And you go on their Twitter page and they got 361 followers. How good are you at public fucking relations? If you got 361 <laughs> followers, I want to hang out with you. I'd rather <laughs> hang out with somebody with the HIV. They got more followers. People feel sorry for you if you got the HIV. You're a PR with 20 fucking followers. Some chick called me from Denver. Hi, I'm public. I was on the computer. Hi, I'm a friend or whatever. I'm looking for comedy clients. If you'd like to, this is my webpage. Webpage is beautiful. Puerto Ricans, women dancing, Miami Vice, you know. Then I went to the Twitter page, 22 people. What do I want to hang out with you for? Wow. I know people got the flu who got more fucking friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know people who got fucking HIV, cancer, who got more fucking friends than you. 22 people. What public relation? Who the fuck do you know? You know loneliness. That's what you know. <laughs> <laughs> fuck these motherfuckers, Lee. Oh, my goodness. It was crazy going on stage on Saturday. Sure, it's crazy, but you got the balls of fucking steel. It was fun, but that's... They're, the, they're just a great crowd. Like, that would not have gone as well. No, well, I told you. They were church people, so it would be like stealing. Every time I'll go to, out of the fucking thousand people that show up, 200 of them go, did you bring Lee Syed? They love this fucking guy. He goes That's up awesome. there. He's a star of death, and he fucking wiggles. 
He can do whatever the fuck he wants now. He's got he's got him by the ball. He's a Jew working backwards. You know what I'm saying? He's a Jew hanging out with Mussolini. Who's better than him? Nobody. What else, George Perez? What do you got coming on in the books? I know you always got movies, El Cholo. <laughs> you always got something going on. Uh, you know what? I'm actually doing an autism show. Remember that big autism you show do I do? You do that every fucking year. Yeah. I mean, uh, fucking, you do that 22 times a fucking year. Now, this is my uh, fifth year doing it with them. Man. <laughs> What's the date? Uh, October 21st, Fullerton Fox Theater. You're doing a theater. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. It's cool. We got what? Tom Green this year. No shit. Yeah, Tom Green, Sam Tripley. We got, um, I can't say, we got a special person hosting. I'm not going to host this year. I'm going to do a spot. And we also got uh, Joshua Meyerwitz, you know, from the store. Yeah. He's, uh, and then we got uh, Keith Reza. And we got Kate Quigley. Okay. So She was on the podcast. Good kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, nice I, I haven't got to meet her yet, but I've heard good things Fucking about solid, her. Fucking solid, solid, hard worker like you. You and her are the same, you know, always out there. Cool. She's always got a bikini on. She's a crazy bitch. <laughs> but that's what I love about her. She's a crazy bitch, but she's out. She's not sucking dick. She's on stage. You oh, know that's saying? good. No, These that's crazy good bitches come out here, put a bikini on. They want to suck dick and try to be fun. I'm a comedian. Yeah, because you blew three managers. <laughs> All you got is bad breath. You got nothing. You got to fuck it. You got to write <laughs> yeah. jokes, bitch. I haven't had cable for a while. I saw Dustin A. Bar on like the commercial for a show. Yeah, for the show That's on uh, cool. Fox, the uh, like the Gotham. Eagle. Gotham, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like in the commercial. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, D- Dustin, don't fuck around. These kids work, bro. That kid hustles. He was upset because he didn't book a fucking pilot. I'm like, Dustin, look at you. You're a handsome motherfucker. Just sit tight. <laughs> What's up, dog? What are you gonna go home and eat? Talk to me. I have no idea. Ooh, what should I go eat? I don't have anything because I was gone. So you're gonna go. You're gonna go food shopping tonight. Or you're gonna go right to the source. You're gonna get some Thai food. What are you gonna do? Oh. What's with the? I don't know. I'm, I'm hungry. All right. Well, what are you gonna eat? I know you're gonna go to Subway. I know that's what's on your mind. <laughs> well, been, that's like the only healthy thing I can you, get right you've now. You've been thinking Subway since you walked in here. I could see. I could sniff the. The fucking turkey coming out of your <laughs> ear balls and shit. That fucking beat up turkey. They don't fucking cage. Why is it beat up? Because it's not cage free turkeys that Subway <laughs> buy. Those are fucking turkeys that get chased by a car all day and shit down in some country and shit. Is that part of their process? Like they just have like a, a ring and they have like a little car <laughs> going around chasing turkeys. That's it. That's like, it. And they the fucking kids run them over. Like an old station wagon. A maverick. It's good to see you, George Perez. I know you're down there. I know you're big with the rap battle stuff. I know yeah, that you're one of the fucking OGs with the roast battle. Yeah. It's cool, man. You know, like, I barely started going to the store for, like, maybe over, like, a year now. And, like, from day one to now, uh, that's the place to be. I'm not putting no other club down, but, like, I like the vibe there. Over there, it's, like, everyone's trying to get with everybody. It's a dark club. And yeah. certain people fit in that club, and some people just really don't. Yeah. You could tell when a comic walks in there on the way out if he's ever going to come back. I could tell. <laughs> like, Rudy Moreno went in there, walked out, never came back. She made him a regular. Mitzi was walking by the fucking room, main room. Rudy was up there doing the Spanish room. Made him a regular when he walked off. Rudy came one night. The set was running seven minutes late. He got in his car and never came back. Wow. And I knew it. There's just people who get up in certain situations. The store's not for everybody. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a combat comedy. Yeah. It's too real. They're right up on top of you. It's, it's, the improv is a little bit cleaner. You know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I just had this quiche Lorraine that was <laughs> sensational. You know, people go to the store that just ate somebody's asshole <laughs> and did a line of blow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You go to Laugh Factory, it's the little kids. They just, quiche Lorraine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did you pull that one from? That's who goes to the fucking improv. People eat quiche Lorraine and. You know, oh they, they, they love whales and, you know, shit like that. <laughs> they go whale watching in Santa Monica. I want to stand there and watch a whale. Like, I want fucking foot fungus in my asshole. You understand me? Fuck whales. Do you I'm think they'll go there. see that movie about that guy walking on a tightrope across buildings? You know what, man? I'm going to get a tightrope and have you walk across. <laughs> from the Honda store right to this window over here. I'm not going to see that movie. That movie's in 3D. Which one? The movie about the dude who walks in the tightrope. Oh, see. yeah, that shit looks crazy. But the problem is, you get high and you go see that in 3D, you're going to get vertigo. You're going to get dizzy and shit. <laughs> you're going to sit there and go, what the fuck is going on with this shit? 
What's the last movie you seen? I, I seen Straight Outta Compton, man. I that. saw Straight I saw, uh, we went to see the movie this week with Crazy Man, Black what? Mass. Oh, okay. With, uh, what's his name about? Yeah. About, what's his name? Yeah, Johnny but the, the Mafia Was guy. Was it the number one movie this weekend? Oh, I'll go check. Check it out. See what the number one. Yeah. Not a bad movie. Ha no? It was slow. I seen it had bad reviews. It did get bad reviews? Yeah, because they were saying that he's supposed to like get Oscar nominated or something. I, no. I thought it was too broad. No. I think they he should did a great job, but no Oscar nomination. That's okay. not, but you never know. They gave it to the guy from the Hurt Locker. You know, anybody could win a fucking Oscar today. Yeah. What was the number one movie? It had to be Black Mass. Uh, it was actually it was Maze Runner got thirty, but then Black Mass got twenty two. Yeah, that could be Johnny Depp's demise right there. What it cost to make? It tells you. But he already has another movie coming out where he plays like another pirate or something. Yeah, but the Pirates of the Caribbean is just fucking. That's a brand. That's always gonna make you know kids go. They dress up. They stab <laughs> each other with umbrellas. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You're going to stab me with a fucking umbrella. Get a sword, you fuck. <laughs> what happened, Lee? I was trying to find out how much it cost. Ah, don't worry about it. Who gives a fuck? I'm just making a fuck point it. that, you know, Johnny Depp needed a big fucking movie. Like, this had to be big. $22 million. He did a good job. He I did a good job. I enjoyed the movie. I really did. I don't think it's an Academy Award winner. Okay. I, 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 liked, I liked Ron Livingston. Which one was he? He was the guy that had, like, the beard. Not the chubby hitman, but his buddy. Oh, okay. He was in office space. Oh, yeah. Ron Is it Lemonster. worth me going to buy a ticket? Yeah, it's entertainment. It's All entertainment. Right. You smoke a joint. Listen, it's entertainment, bro. Okay. You know, there's dip between being bored or a bad movie and something that entertains you. Even though it's slow, it's dark, and there's these moments, you know, but it's a, it's a good story. It's a good story that maybe was told the wrong way. Do you agree? I think they should have focused on something... Like they just glazed over, like kind of glazed over his son dying. Like he was a like an evil part. Like he, like they didn't go into like all the murders he used to. Like they they like showed a couple of them, but I think it like he was a, it would have been a cooler movie if it hadn't been like his entire life. Because then when they do that, it's, you know, it's only two hours. So he was fucking ruthless, that guy. You know, killing women and stuff. And I remember the other day when I was watching it. Yeah, I that's gotta be honest with you. There was a, a minute that I was like, I wanted to be this guy. <laughs> you know, this what, is the asshole I wanted to be when I was twenty. I thought that that's what worked. I thought that that was what I had around me. Those were the people that were cool, the people that did that stupid shit. You know, uh -huh. for like a minute, I was like, this could have been me hanging out with this idiot. And well, you live by their code, and also he starts killing people in front of you, dog, killing wow. women. What do you do, George? You don't show up to work there; they hunt you down. Yeah. The next day. Straight and up. with the money he had, he puts a private investigator on you. He'll hunt you in California. He'll shoot you wherever that dude. So you got to get a fucking passport and leave and go halfway around the world. I mean, that guy eluded the cops for a long fucking time. Fucking and when asshole. they found him, he still had a half a million fucking dollars in cash. In the wall with guns and everything. Fucking tourist. <laughs> he had guns in the wall? Yeah, and, and it American, was a tourist who rather them out from like Germany or something. How did the tourists see him? They saw uh, they saw it on CNN. They saw like a report on it or something. And they said, and we're like, oh, I recognize that. I think it was his girlfriend. That's right, the girlfriend. They fed cats in the neighborhood. Just like Hannibal, remember how they they found him in the second movie? He was like in Spain or something. And they got him with a glass and they. <laughs> When they're oh, looking yeah. for you like that, dog, it's yeah. just a matter of time. You gotta have endless cash. Chopo's the only one to get away. Yeah, Chopo will get away. Chopo's somewhere with two hundred motherfuckers surrounding a building. Guess what? <laughs> Chopo's right here. Yeah. <laughs> you think he's in LA? Where would you go? Not Where would you go and blend? Not America. What? What listen, if you don't want to be found, you gotta be right in front of them. Really? That's how real pimps do it. Yeah. When people are looking for you, you got to be right in front of them because they're looking for you out of that circle. I guess, yeah. You're just not going to go to the same bar you go to. You're not going to go to the same fucking route. You're not going to go to the same place to get a haircut. Well, do you think that was Osama? Do you think if they, that's what Osama did, if that's what... No, I'm talking about El Chapo. El Chapo left fucking Mexico. Where could he go? He went to First, America. Right, he went to America, so he went north. So he either went to one of the fucking border states where he could shave his mustache 
but they're going to be looking from there. Those little small 30 miles, if they looked at George, they know you're not from around there. Something yeah. is different. So where would he fucking go with all that money? Los Angeles or Chicago. There's tons of fucking Mexicans in Chicago. <laughs> he shaves his mustache, he dyes his hair blonde, and he gets a You know how long it takes him to get a license and a passport? Five minutes. He's on yes. Forbes fucking list, okay? He could do plastic surgery and shoot the fucking plastic surgeon. He could do a thousand fucking <laughs> things with that type of money. What do you think? They don't shoot the plastic surgeon? You're going to let some guy know he did plastic surgery on you. That's fucking good luck. Yeah. Good fucking luck. Imagine getting that phone call, being the plastic surgeon. You're like, oh. oh. No, you're not going to get a phone call. It's going to be a Mexican, a cousin of a cousin, a cousin of a cousin. He's going to get you at the house. It's going to be great. You're not going to think about it. They're going to want it done in two days. So it gives you no time to think about it. Yeah. There's no pre map There's no nothing. They do crazy shit like that. They do that shit in Mexico all the fucking time. That's why, you know, people go, bro, my buddy was in on this business that they're going to start. A bunch of doctors that have been, like, suspended in the United States are going to go right over the border to Mexico. They're going to take care of you for a third of what it costs to do medicine here. They're gonna get, oh, great. They're going to get buses. <laughs> oh, good. They're going to get buses. Not doctors who have been suspended. Like, Super for fucking, Ebola. Not doctors who have been suspended for <laughs> killing you on the thing. But doctors that when you pass out, they finger bang you. They're looking for a second chance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'll fix your tooth for 10 bucks. You're not going to go see him. So what? His finger smells Conti funny. Continuation school doctors and shit? No. These are guys that, you know, lost license. Whatever, man. Who do you think happens? Who do you think gives you prescriptions for these fucking medical marijuana yeah. licenses? Who do you think gives you prescriptions for these fucking things? Yeah, but they're just running a piece of paper. And they give out pieces of candy. These guys are abolished. Do you think they're going to go <laughs> back and practice medicine when they write those medical marijuana fucking licenses? Lee? No. They're guys that are on the way out. They're semi-retired. They don't give a fuck. These Russians go to the house and go, how are you, doctor? <laughs> Listen, we get 75 per license. We give you 30. We do 22 licenses a day. When the big thing in Michigan, when weed opened up in Michigan, all the Russians from here left to Michigan to open up medical places because they were getting three, 400 like it was here. Ten wow. years ago, a medical marijuana license was $250. Yeah. Damn. When I first got my license, it was two hundred and fifty dollars. There was no negotiation, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you want a license? Two fifty. You know how long the line was when I went? I called that motherfucker on a Monday. He scheduled me for three Mondays at two in the afternoon, and when I got there, it was ten fucking Luigi's in there in front of me at two fifty a fucking license. Fuck. You understand me? So this guy might have gotten suspended or whatever. He, you know. That's twenty five hundred. He was fucking that Jewish chick's doctor. What's the <laughs> what's the chick that the ugly old woman who was the comedian who died on the electrical table? <laughs> what's her fucking name? She had like ninety fucking mm. plastic surgery. John Rivers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, bitch oh, like that. No. What they she, 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 <laughs> chick the thousand plastic and surgeries. Then Conrad Murray. Huh? And then Conrad <laughs> Is he what's gonna be like that? He's <laughs> Michael Jackson's doctor. Yeah. So what? So let wow. me ask you a question. Is he going to be like that crown jewel? So let me ask you a question. Is he still in jail, Conrad Murray? I don't know. So Conrad Murray gets out of jail. He goes to Mexico. Let's say you need a new eyeball in the United States. They want $22,000 for an eyeball. Let's say Conrad Murray can give it to you for eight. <laughs> 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 you might not wake up. So yeah. who gives a fuck? At least you get the it for eight. My buddy Martin Perez went to Mexico to get the lap band. He said it cost 30000 in the United States. I don't know what the fuck it was. He says it cost him 6000 in Mexico. Fuck. Uh, yeah, girls go over there to get their fake asses done and the tits right now. It's like the most yeah, popular Yeah, that's shit. the most it's popular. It's an injection. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this poor fucking moment. What He's are a, you talking about? That's what they do. They go. That's why I told you that my friend got the new kidney. Remember, they wouldn't give her a kidney. <laughs> Celine, they wouldn't give her a kidney for a year. She had to sign up for a program. She couldn't drink. She oh, called the shit. Mexicans. They're like, drink. You can drink the day of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. That's how we test the kidney. We give you a shot of tequila to make sure everything works and shit. You think they give a fuck about types, whether they match? They'll stab a Hindu tourist and give you his fucking... <laughs> You fucking Mexican walking around with a Hindu's fucking kidney. You always want to eat that yum yum shit. Your feet are dirty. <laughs> Your feet are dry. You're like, what the fuck? My feet always fucking dry. I'm Puerto Rican. Why are my feet fucking dry and chappy? Because you got an Indian's kidney in you. 
<laughs> you know, Seven Eleven, their feet are always dried and fuck those Hindus. <laughs> Because you got to look at their feet to judge a man. You look at their toes. Are they wearing sandals? If they're, yeah, they got sandals on. They got brown skin, and that toe is gray. They haven't put cream on that foot in 20 fucking years since they left Pakistan. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck you think I'm talking about here, Paulie? You're going to get it. Let me read the ad yeah. so you get the fuck out of here. We'll end it on that note. We don't want to insult I'm nobody else. Up. But it's true. How fucked up are you on that star, oh, dog? I'm fucking feeling I it now. told you, dog. We don't fuck around here. And Lee ate a star and 50 milligrams. 200 milligrams. What 200? Stop fucking making Every stories. Every week, all that gave me the 50. There's no 50. It's just 200. We went through 100 stars in Las Vegas in three days. Oh, for real? Wow. 100 anarchy edibles. Star. Fuck. Joey Filato, the first night, that fool ate three of them. He passed out for four hours. <laughs> he said he ate ice cream 10 fucking times. His wife. Joe Perez ate them. Me and Lee were eating them like fucking nothing. I love Joey Falato. He was walking around being like, he was like, like your hype man. He was like, you know why I'm Joey Falato? You heard me on the podcast. Um, like all his stories, 100 percent true. He's the coolest dude. He's like, he's like I was telling you, it's weird that you're like the reserved one between him and you. Oh, he's loud. He's great. <laughs> he's a good fucking dog. On it. You know, I'm sick and tired of talking to you about this shit. <laughs> Shroom Tech, fucking uh, Immune. That's why I took three of them before Southwest flight. I'm up in fucking Dandy. Lee had to take ten naps because I, I took, took one shit. nap. Don't fucking matter. I didn't nap. I'm twice your fucking age. I slept five fucking hours last night. I, threw some I was making down. money in the blackjack. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't even get my 10% yet. I didn't get a final total. <laughs> that comes to Vegas with me. Oh, he yeah. wins 80, 90, 200 dollars. I don't even, nothing trickles down over here. Not even a fucking, he don't show up with a cheeseburger or nothing. <laughs> the fuck, God, sucker. He oh, made good. a ton of fucking dough. Anyway, back to on it. All the supplements they have are world class. I love their shit. The hemp protein shake, 16 grams of protein, two scoops with a fucking banana. You're brand new. A few ice cubes, some water. Listen, I don't give a fuck whether you believe me or not or whatever the fuck you want to do. Give it a try yourself. The, uh, the uh, Alpha Brain's got 100% money back guarantee, and we don't want the fucking product back. Who does that shit? Nobody. That's a proof, testimony that this shit will fucking work for you. Go to onit.com, look at the supplements, look at the great fucking things they got from the tea booster to the MCT oil. They got some stuff that'll put a hem in your skirt. Go to Onit right now and put in church and get 10% off your first order. They also have barbells and kettlebells and weighted vests. I can't do nothing for you on the fucking that stuff. But as far as supplements, I get you 10% off. All right. That's how I roll. Number two, Hitty Sigs. I love these fucking things. You see me smoking them all the time. You think I smoke them because I like them? You know, you know, you know me. I don't like broccoli. I don't eat broccoli for fucking nobody. <laughs> these ain't fucking bad, these Hetty Sigs. I love them to death. They're trademarked 1,200 fucking guaranteed puffs out of each cigar. 1,200. Whether you get the cigar or the four cigarettes, the nicotine, the e cigs, they got 24, 16, 8, and 0 milligrams if you want to quit smoking. What's up? Tell them they need to call uh, Larry so he can be like walking around because we, we were looking for. Vapor pens at the casinos. They should have Larry and people walking around selling Hetty Sigs. I'll call them first thing in the morning. Thank yeah. you for interrupting me with that little tidbit. Anyway, go to HittySigs.com right now and press in. Joey's Church. And get five for five. You get a five cigar. For five for 50. I'm sorry. <laughs> Correct me there. Five for 50. I don't want you people going on there with your fucking $6 ATM card. And all of a sudden they tell you to go fuck yourself. Five for 50. <laughs> Great tasting cigar. <laughs> 24, 16, and 8 milligrams. Hit these things. The proof is in the puff. 1,200 guaranteed fucking. <laughs> Look at this fucking Momo. Look at the shape of this poor fucking guy. You know what? I don't know about you guys. Best underwear on the market for me. Me undies. Most comfortable underwear you ever fucking try. They fit fucking perfectly, and they keep the moisture off your skin. I don't care if you jump up and down for two hours. Your balls will always be dry. They don't ride up on you. They pull the moisture away from the skin, and they keep you fucking cool. You won't have no chafing, the whole thing. I'm not wearing one right now. I can bullshit and tell you I feel like I'm floating. I don't have them now. I have them when I work out, when I run, whatever the fuck I do, stuff like that. I want my balls bouncing around. I want to keep the sweat to a minimum. I go with meundies.com. They also make women's underwear and T-shirts and sweatshirts. They have a great selection of T-shirts and shorts and these, like, uh, cut sweatpants. But don't believe me. Go to MeUndies.com. Check out the pics of all the different styles of underwear. And for the girls, check out the hot-looking boy shorts they got for you. 
men oh. and women, high quality materials for high quality materials, if you know what I mean. The price, <laughs> glad you asked, a fraction of what typical high end designer fucking underwear costs. Don't believe me. Do me a favor. Go to MeUndies.com right now. Look at the great selection they got, and you get 20% off your first order. 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com. And right now, you're going to get free shipping in U.S. and Canada. And the guarantee is you'll be happy with them. Trust me. Like I said, if I'm out of the fucking house slinging dick, I got my MeUndies on. You have to go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. So go to MeUndies.com slash Joey and get 20% off your first order and free shipping in the United States and fucking Canada. You know, you Canadians got to keep your nuts in fucking tack. It's getting now, cold. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes of what I'm talking about here, okay? Everybody wants to go home, smoke a few joints, you're fucking hungry at night. You're going to eat something bad for you. Cut that shit out. Go to naturebox.com right now, okay? Naturebox.com has a great selection of fucking nutritionist approved snacks, whether it's the chocolate yum yums or the, or the vanilla almond granola or the, 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 the Pacific plantains. I mean, listen, it's never fucking ending with them. Their snacks are delicious, nutritious. You'll never go to the fucking vending machine at work, and they're resealable. So you can eat 10 plantains, reseal them, and put them in the desk, whatever the fuck you want to do. The sesame sticks are to die for. I'm not kidding you people. I have these things at the house. I don't give them to Lee. Fuck him. I never I get any snacks. Myself. My personal favorites are the chocolate yam yams and the sesame sticks. Plain and fucking simple. And you know what? You have zero chance of getting bored because they always adding new stuff, whether it's the jalapeno cashews, Pumpkin seeds, they're always adding new stuff. But do me a favor. Nature Box is full of flavor and without any junk. So do me a favor. Let's call to action here. Go online to get your first box at <laughs> naturebox.com slash Joey. Go online to get your first box at naturebox.com slash Joey right now. Head to naturebox.com slash Joey right now to unbox a world of taste <coughs> and possibilities. One last time, go to naturebox.com right now for your first box of Beyond Tasty you get five bags per fucking box, man. So remember, the smart snack guarantee takes the risk out of snacking. If you don't like a snack, send it back and they'll replace it with a new one. That's what I'm talking about. That's naturebox.com. I'd like to thank Onnit, MeUndies, naturebox.com, Hitty Sigs, and what's the other one? Uh, Nailedlife.com. Nailed it life always there for you. I'd like to thank George Perez for coming in. George, what's your next comedy date, my brother? Uh, that that uh, October twenty first. That's a benefit. Yeah, and where is it at? Fullerton Fox Theater. And is there a web page they could go? Yes, yeah, at uh, Fullerton uh, FullertonCares dot com. I have Sam on, so he can promote. Okay, the thank you. Thing. I'll be in New York City this weekend, but guess what? It's sold out. Eleven forty five Friday and Saturday. Toledo Funny Bone the following weekend, October second to the fourth. Get your tickets right now. I love you guys. Thank you for supporting my special. I want to thank George Perez for coming up tonight. I love this fucking guy thank with you. all my heart. Follow George on Twitter or Facebook. It's a great success story. You know, he had problems too, and he's out there making it happen. I get emails every week of people having problems and whatnot. Just put your fucking head to it, man. It all comes down, and you'll be here laughing. You'll be laughing at this ten years later. What's your com- what's your Twitter? Uh, at George P Comedy. George P Comedy. Are you going to sit there and look at me like a dunce? Put on Benny Moran. I'm going to drop some fucking music on you tonight. Old school Cuban music, 1950 Benny Moran. Sinatra once walked into a casino in Cuba and heard Benny Moran, and he said he wanted to shoot him. That's how good this <laughs> fucking guy's voice was. Do you want to play? Benny Moran, Como Fue, a little ballad for you motherfuckers. Then you go on YouTube and look at the rest of this shit.